that Bernard with what with uh uh things that fly. Uh uh things that jump. Uh things that play the harmonica. Uh, uh, come on, come on. Uh, my celebrity stinks. She's giving me lousy truth. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, 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 what a nightmare. That's the last time I ate a whole box of steakums right before bed. What are you guys doing up so early? I thought uh, retired people were supposed to get as much sleep as possible. You know, to rest up for all the clapping you gotta do to turn the lights on and off. <laughs> Gladys, were you smoking heavily when you were pregnant with Chris? Chris, your father has something very important he wants to talk to you about. Well, sure, Dad, but I can't be late for work. That's exactly what I want to talk to you about. You know, son, a couple of years ago, when you moved out of the house into the garage, that was a step in the right direction. But now your mother and I feel like maybe you're in a rut. We don't think you're really happy, and we don't want to see you turn into some kind of lost soul. Well, gosh, Ma, you make it sound like I'm going to start sending flowers to Jodie Foster or something. Jodie Foster, Daryl Hannah. <laughs> All right, now, wait a second. I am not obsessed with Daryl Hannah, okay? I just happen to believe that she may very well be one of the greatest American actresses since Lillian Gish. <laughs> Look, Mom, Dad, journalism, it's in my blood. I, I love the thrill of it, the excitement of it, the, the smell of it, the down and dirty, stagnant, stinking stench of it all. <laughs> well, I can tell you to understand. Have a good day at work, son. Mother? Father? I'm off. <laughs> Look on the bright side, Gladys. His boss says he's the best man for the job. come to rescue you from a grueling day at the office and take you out on a fun-filled adventure. Hey, what a great idea. Get out. Larry, 
I'm doing this for you, pal. The rat race, it's eating you up alive, buddy. Chris, what do you know about the rat race? You're a paper boy. <laughs> hey, I'm head paper boy, okay? I got five guys under me, all right? And when things get tight, I can do other jobs. Larry, look, the point is, there's nothing more important in life than free time. Forget it. Listen, the last time we went on one of your little adventures, we ran over a pig. <laughs> No, Larry, uh, that was an accident, and it was not a pig. It was a bag of garbage. It was a pig! A pig! Larry. Larry, are you, are you talking to me? Uh, no, uh, I'm from the water company, ma'am. Uh, we, uh, released some mustard sulfites into the water, and, uh, you know, now we're warning people not to bathe. Otherwise, you know, they're gonna smell like mustard. How interesting. Larry, what is Chris Peterson doing here? He delivered our paper, honey. Well, he is not required to deliver it into my bedroom. Well, that's not what you told the Domino's boy last night. Oh, right. <laughs> what did I say? It's a joke. Peterson, you are such a brat. <laughs> what are you doing here anyway? Shouldn't you be out selling seeds with the Boy Scouts or something? Oh, ouch, what a zinger! <laughs> sarcastic and right to the heart comment about my life. Sharon, you've opened my eyes. You've matured me instantly. Hey, you got a Nintendo. Yeah, a power glove, too. Lawrence cannot play with you right now, Chris. Larry has a real job he's got to get ready for. Right, Lawrence? Oh, sure, I understand. Hey, listen, uh, Sharon. I brought you something, uh, a <clears throat> little gift. This is the new Victoria's Secret catalog. Uh, I'm done with it, but I went ahead and I circled some items in here that, uh, well, maybe you should take a look at. Unless, of course, you are more comfortable with the burlap bag look. And don't get me wrong. I really think it looks terrific on you, but... Chris, yeah, maybe you should. Yeah. let me just say this as precisely as I possibly can. Okay. You're 30 years old. You still live with your parents. You're losing your hair. And you're stupid. <laughs> yep. You know, I think that just about covers it. <laughs> now, I'm going downstairs to make some coffee. For Larry. Larry, I love her. She's a dream. If you ever divorce her, can you please let me know? Because I'd like to, you okay. know, get in there if yeah, I could. Fine, I don't know. Fine. Chris, could you please tell me why you and Sharon have to fight all the time? Gee, I don't know. Maybe we're frustrated because we're secretly in love with each other. But I doubt it, Larry. I really doubt it. Come on, let's go. Forget it. I can't take the day off. Things are crazy down at Bushman and Simon. And ever since old man Simon got drunk and rode his horse into the mall, we've been losing customers right and left. Now, we're under the gun to come up with new clients or else. I can't just live like you and hang out with Wally and the Beave and bug Mr. Wilson. <laughs> okay, Larry, but I just happen to have two tickets to the Funland Amusement Park, Larry. And, well, they're unveiling today for the first time the first 360-degree super roller coaster in Minnesota, Larry. Larry, it's the Hell Loop 2000. The Hell Loop 2000? I heard about that. Mm -hmm. No. No way. I can't just skip off on a whim whenever I want. I've got responsibilities. It really does a complete loop. Uncle Chris! WrestleMania! WrestleMania! Oh, hi, Daddy. I need to notice you over there. Bobby and I are going to play with your power glove, okay? Okay, fine. Okay, fine. What am I saying? No, it's not okay, fine. This is my Nintendo. Understand me? Mine, mine, mine. Oh my gosh, Dad, don't let the blood vessel over it. Mama. <laughs> Okay, maybe I have been a little tense lately, at least with the kids. Larry, you're exactly the person they built the Hell Loop 2000 for. Chris, I can't go. Even if I wanted to, I can't get out of work on such short notice. Okay, leave that to me. I'll just call your office and pretend I'm you. Are you crazy? Now, well, relax. Listen, I'm a master of mimicry. I've got you down perfectly. Yeah, how you doing? This is Lawrence T. Potter the third. <laughs> yeah, who you be? Lorraine? Yeah, all right. Well, Lorraine, you dig this. I got the cold, see? And, uh... And my uncle, he died. Yeah, so I got to go to the funeral, you dig? Yeah, so I ain't gonna be dragging my sorry old butt in there today. Yeah, you pass that on. All right, baby, later for you. There, it's done. You just got me fired, you idiot. Will you relax? Your voice is very guttural, and I think I captured that quality marvelously. You're a free man. Come on, let's go. I'm not going. 
Chris, look, you'll always be my best friend, but we're not children anymore, and you can't manipulate me like you used to. Okay. I understand. You're chicken. All right, that's it. I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> The ride's over, fellas. Oh, well, we apologize for our enthusiastic wooing, sir, but as you can tell, your ride brings us great joy. <laughs> You've been on this thing five times. You getting off? Just what the hell does that mean, you filth? <laughs> Chris, he's asking if we're done, if we're getting off the ride. Oh, oh, oh pardon me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I thought that you thought that, well, Larry and I were, <laughs> were lovers or something. <laughs> Now, why would I think a thing like that? Well, two men on a roller coaster giggling like schoolgirls, you could easily get the wrong impression, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right, we are going to go one more time, so uh, let her rip. Uh, actually, Chris, you know, it's getting late. But you were right about today. I feel a lot less tense, thanks. Well, Larry, the only way to thank me is to ride the loop one more time. Come on, one more time, one more time. All right, all right, one more time, and that's it. All right, let her go. <laughs> Weenies. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Through the loop. Here we go, you bloody bastard. Um, Larry, are we moving through the loop a lot slower this time? <laughs> it's probably just a temporary malfunction. I bet we'll be moving in no more than two seconds. I bet you're right. Larry, we're stuck. <laughs> ah! It's jam! Oh no, I'll be back dipping funnel cakes in the deep fryer by tomorrow. We'll have you down in no time. Hold on to your pants. Did he just ask us where we bought our pants at a time like this? <laughs> the gap, you idiot. Now get us down. Chris, today was supposed to be relaxing. It was supposed to be fun. Instead, I'm stuck in a bad Irwin Allen movie with an aging Dennis the Menace. All right, just relax, okay? I know you're frightened, Larry, but I promise you, I will get us through this thing, okay? Just relax. <sighs> There's got to be a morning after. Ah, it's waiting right outside the door. Ah. Watergate was really bad. The movie Brian song was kind of sad. Playing Pac-Man at the mall. China under martial law. Gorbachev comes to town. Chris and Larry upside down. We didn't start the fire. It was all. Shut up! I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna rip out your vocal cords and stuff them in your ear. Are you getting a little cranky? Yes, I'm getting cranky. We've been upside down for two hours already. Yeah, and that kind of brings up an interesting point. I wonder how long it takes before all the blood rushes to your brain and your head explodes. <laughs> well, why is this taking so long? Don't they realize this thing could fall at any second? Larry, don't be ridiculous. This is a state-of-the-art roller coaster. It's been tested, double-tested, and triple-tested. We're perfectly safe. Well, in retrospect, what we should have done is tested this thing. <laughs> Obviously, that car could fall off the track any second now. I'll have to act fast. Henderson, call Thrill World. Find out how they handle their dead. <laughs> I just want to go home. Home to my kids and my dear sweet wife. Dear sweet wife? <laughs> hey, pal, I don't know what you're smoking over there, but I think it's distorting your sense of reality. Oh, shut up. You're such an idiot. Yeah, well, has it ever occurred to you that I'm happy being an idiot, Mr. 9 to 1? Chris, it's 9 to 5, not 9 to 1. Wow, you really put in the hours there, don't you? Wait, 
What was that? Oh, we're gonna die up here. We're gonna don't, die. Don't say that, Larry. Don't say that. We. All right, listen. We need to keep our strength. Let's let's eat. We need to ration what little food we have here. Would you like some Doritos? Crunch all you want. We'll make more. <laughs> That is so cool. Bring it up again! You idiots! You morons! Uh, what are they yelling at us? Oh, well, they're just shouting, you know, words of encouragement, best wishes, and so forth, that sort of thing. <laughs> Now that's kind of odd. Grace, I must be hallucinating. I think I see an angel. That's no angel, Larry. That's Connie Bristol from WRXT TV. We're saved, Larry. We're saved. Thank God. Wait a second, TV. We can't, we're not going to be on TV, are we? Well, sure. We're kind of like those whales that were stuck in the ice. What if somebody sees me? Everybody at work thinks I'm at a funeral. Oh, yeah. Well, quick, hide. Where the hell am I supposed to hide? Would you two idiots please shut up? We're about to go on the air. Hello, I'm Connie Bristol reporting from Funland Amusement Park and suspended upside down behind me are two very brave men whose lives may end at any moment. Hi guys, you want to tell us your names? Connie, do you think maybe we could do the interview down on the ground? I asked your names. Hey mom, look! I'll go Chris and Daddy on TV! Cool! Well, I'm Chris Peterson and this is my friend Larry Potter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it appears as though the roller coaster is about to tear off the track and plummet to the hard concrete below right now during my exclusive report. <laughs> well, I guess not. <laughs> and now let's go back to our studios where Dr. Charles Friedman will tell us how long a person can hang upside down before their head explodes. Don't go. You can use your crane thing to get us down. Sorry, reporters have to stay objective. We just can't get involved with our story. Bye. Come back. I think I saw that one on the Home Shopping Network. They sold about 400 of them in a minute. Let me put this just as delicately as I possibly can. Larry and I are having a dinner party. Get the hell out of here. Jeez. Oh, sorry. Hi, folks. Sorry I'm late. Ugh, I had a little trouble getting by Checkpoint Charlie. Uh, so, Sharon, aren't you going to introduce me? Ted, Betty. An idiot. Please excuse her. She's stinking drunk. Hi, I'm Chris Peterson, and you're uh, Higgins, aren't you? Yeah, I recognize you. You guys are on my route. And hey, you owe me for three weeks. 
You know, I'm not one to bring up business at a social gathering, but I would hate to see that show up on your credit report, pal. <laughs> Hello. combination of stuff. <laughs> this is Sharon's sister, Charlene. Larry, that is the most vile, disgusting, filthy joke I've ever heard in my entire life. Yes, I'm going to count to ten, and then... Sharon, that may have impressed people when you were three, but I think this is a little more sophisticated crowd here. <laughs> so, Charlene, how long are you going to be in town for? Chris, don't I hear your mother calling? Chris lives with his parents, Charlene. Which isn't too surprising, considering he is a 30-year-old paper boy. You know, I think what your sister's trying to do is make me look like an idiot. But don't judge me until you know the facts. The truth is, I'm head paper boy, and I do not live with my parents. I live in a very cool... Mm -hmm. How do I look? Fred, would you like to take this one? Well, it's uh, not an outfit I would have put together, but... It looks very smart on you, son. You're not going outside with that wet hair, are you, dear? Mom, my hair isn't wet. I put Vitalis in it. Look, it's in a cool ducktail, just like Dad's. Chris, you're not becoming one of those mafia wise guy good fellows, are you? Dad, come on. That kind of break takes the sort of connections I just don't have. No, I'm all dressed up like this because my boss wants to see me. And I think it's because I'm getting a promotion. A promotion? Oh, Chris, that's wonderful. Do you think it'll be a desk job? Mom, please, no. I'm as much a part of the streets as the gum on the sidewalk, as, as the cigarette butts in the cracks, as the worms that come out after a summer's rain to make sweet love under the hot afternoon sun. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting way too poetic. No, I'll never give up the streets. Well, it's nice to see such dedication. It's asinine and it's misguided, but it's dedication. <laughs> they probably want to expand my territory to reward a job well done. But you know what? It's going to cost them. Here's my list of demands. Uh, apply cream to affected area twice daily. Oh, I'm sorry, that's my ointment instructions. Don't ask, Dad. Don't worry, I won't. Maybe you should just accept what they offer you, dear. Ma, that's the kind of rollover attitude that has us still driving a Monte Carlo instead of a hovercraft. Chris, you can't drive a hovercraft on the highway. Dad, I don't want to get into this argument with you again, okay? The point is, I have the newspaper right where I want him. Here's my real list of demands. I need a padded seat for my bike, a thermos, and a mistress on 24-hour call, seven days a week. Bye. Good luck, dear. Gladys, if they give him a mistress, I'm getting a paper route. <laughs> yourself at home, Peterson. Thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> Peterson, how long have you been a paperboy? Uh, well, let's see now. There is, uh, one, two, three. 
Uh, 18 years in January. Well, for many of those 18 years, you've been a valued employee. Well, thanks, Ronnie. I, I think I know what you're trying to say. And as you know, here at the paper, we're always looking for ways to improve performance. Well, yeah, me too. Like when I was taking steroids, remember? It's terrible what happens when you stop, though. The muscle just turns right to fat. <laughs> um, now, this chart represents the productivity we can expect from the average 12-year-old paperboy. Of course, your results are somewhat better since you've mastered the job over the last two decades. Are you with me so far? Uh, well, actually, to be honest, I'm a little more comfortable with pie graphs. But please continue. Well, as, as you can see, we've had generally good performance with just a few dips representing sick days and vacations, but on the whole, we've been quite pleased with the results. I think I know what's coming. <laughs> That's why we're sorry to lose you. I don't know what you're talking about. There's a, there's a new paper boy in town. Let me introduce paper boy 2000. The high-tech answer to newspaper delivery. This machine does the work of all our paper boys faster and in a much more economical fashion. In fact, we estimate savings of up to four dollars a week. Four dollars a week? I know it doesn't sound like much, but over the course of a year, it really adds up. Well, I guess if you put it that way, it does kind of sound impressive. Wow, what a day. You got this fancy new machine and I'm getting a raise. Let's go out and have a party. Yes, and you're not comprehending this, are you? You're fired. What? Well, this is just a blatant case of sexual discrimination, cut and dry and wrapped up with a little bow. No, it's because of Paperboy 2000. Time marches on, Peterson. Soon Paperboy 2000 will be a staple of American life. Mark my words, Peterson, if Norman Rockwell were alive today, he'd be painting this baby. Norman Rockwell's dead? Gosh. You know, I just need about five hours of quiet time alone in this office, please. Don't worry, Peterson. I'm sure you'll land on your feet. Well, to be honest, I have my doubts about that. Anyway, pass the news on to the other paper boys. Tomorrow is your last day. Do you think it would be possible on my last day for you to provide me with a mistress? <laughs> Dr. Kramer, thanks for coming. Mrs. Whitman. We're here to support you, Chris. You know, Chris, losing a job is one of the leading causes of stress-related illness. So whatever you do, try not to die. <laughs> try, Doc. This is a terrible thing. Being replaced by a machine. It's like 1984. Uh, the year's 1990, Doc, but uh, I appreciate the sentiment. All right, let's get started. Let's settle down. Let's settle down, people. I know we're all so anxious to hear from our own Chris Peterson. He called this meeting to discuss his paper route. But first, is there any other business? Sharon Potter, very well. Thank you, Mrs. Trogdon. Residents of Greenville, we are all in grave danger. The results of the tests are in, and it has been confirmed. There are dangerously high levels of radon in Greenville's basement. Now, we must do something about this problem. Okay, all... Sharon. Whoa, boy, war of the world. Oh, they're all coming down with ray guns. Oh, so scared. Okay, I think Officer Burrell has some documents for you to sign. There she goes. Sharon Potter, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't she wonderful? Oh, my. Always with the Hollywood causes. She insulted me and she insulted all of you. But now she's gone and it's like somebody opened a window in here, huh? <laughs> now on to things we all really care about. As most of you have already probably heard, all the paper boys were fired today. Oh. That's right. But the worst thing about all of this is that we're being replaced by a machine. No. no. Now... I know that as a paper boy, I have a few faults. No, Chris, you're a great paper boy. Larry, I know, it just added a nice rhythm to my speech. No machine could replace you. This is an outrage. Wait! 
Before you make a decision, I think you should hear more about our high-tech friend. Picture having your paper delivered by a state-of-the-art, sleek, shiny, whisper-quiet robotic buddy with its own guidance system. Wow! Our very own robot? Are you saying it's just like living in outer space? Yes, very much like living in space. You mean like the Jetsons? Yes, the Jetsons. When can we see it? It's idling right outside. Wait. Wait. No, don't go. It's a trick. He's the devil. Don't go. Larry, Larry, you're my best friend. How can you do this to me? I don't know. It just sounds kind of neat. <laughs> oh my god, that's really great. What a great idea. <laughs> metric system? Everybody had such high hopes and then nothing. Fritz, he's been so depressed since he lost his job to Paperboy 2000. Well, on the bright side, we have been getting the paper earlier and in better condition. Plus, it's a lot like living in space. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. My, you're in an awfully good mood this morning. That's right. But you know, last night I realized I had to think things out. So I gave myself a full body herbal rub down. <laughs> and I realized that I really should have given up my paper out a long time ago. Yeah, like maybe when you were 12 years old. You know, I know now that somewhere out there, there's got to be a better job for me. I mean, I could be anything. I could be a, a jet pilot or, or maybe a policeman or the president of the United States. Or maybe a cowboy. <laughs> the point is, I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to pound the pavement until I find a better job. And I'm not going to let anything between the moon and New York City stop me. <laughs> oh, this door's locked. Oh, who am I kidding? I failed. I'm a loser. <laughs> Well, he gave it his best shot, Gladys. <laughs> oh. Uh. Come in. Oh, Chris, are you okay? Your father and I are worried about you, right, Fred? Oh, my God, look at this garbage scowl. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad off you really were, Chris. You completely bottomed out. Oh, no, Fred. His room's always been this vile and disgusting. He's just kind of a pig. Well, that's a relief. No, Dad. I, you're right. I have just kind of let myself go. Look at me. I look like Foster Brooks. Remember, he's the gentleman from those roasts, and he'd come out, and he'd hiccup, and... We know who he is, Chris. Oh, he'd make us laugh and forget our problems for a while. I could sure go for a visit from good old Foster Brooks right about now. Gladys, you think too much TV as a kid can make you an idiot? Oh, I miss my old job. I miss sitting snugly on my bicycle seat, going over particularly bumpy parts of the road and thinking about girls. Fred, say something to him. Give him one of your pep talks. Chris, knock it off. You're driving us nuts. <laughs> hey, 
I think we got through to him. Let's get the hell out of here. Fred, <laughs> look, it's Paperboy 2000. I never thought we'd live to see something like this in our lifetime. Well, oh, nice job, Gladys. My little speech was just beginning to sink in. Honey, I'm sorry. I'm trying to miss you delivering our newspapers to us, but it's not your fault. No one can beat a machine. Beat a no machine. One can beat a machine. Wait a second, Ma. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna... Wait, what am I gonna do? The machine? Yeah, that. Thanks. Thanks. He's gonna make a horse's ass out of himself. <laughs> high tech I'll give them high tech hey look everybody hey it's just like living in space it's nothing like living in space you moron <laughs> Chris, remember, no matter what happens today, they can't take away your dignity. Because you pretty much did that yourself with that outfit. Larry, if I don't make it, I want you to know that my will is underneath my mattress in my bedroom. I'm leaving everything to my parents, except for my dirty laundry. I'm leaving that to Sharon. The specific orders that she separate the colors when she washes them. Because even though I'll be dead, I'll still want my colors separated. She's got to do it, right? I mean, if it's my last wish the law. <laughs> She's gonna be so P.O.'d. <laughs> Look, everybody! Here comes Paperboy 2000! <laughs> uh, excuse me, could somebody tell me which end of this tin can is the butt? Because I'm just about to kick it. <laughs> you know, Peterson, you're a gutsy, emotionally troubled kid. And, well, between us, I hope you win. Oh, who am I kidding? I don't want you to win. I look like a total idiot. All right, everybody. Ready? Set. Quick, let's sneak away before someone notices the family resemblance. <laughs> Chris, are you okay? No, I'm okay. Well, actually, you did better than I thought you would. I figured you'd just fall over and set your clothes on fire. Well, Larry, I'm not an idiot. I guess it's over, Chris. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. I guess Socrates was right. You just can't beat a big, high-tech, computer-driven newspaper delivery system. But you know what? I'm man enough to take my failure in stride. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs>
I'm going to pass this header right for that baby carrot. Imagine if there'd been a baby in there. <laughs> Chris, that was brilliant. What did you do to finally get it to stop? I don't know. I think it just kind of ran out of gas. <laughs> Chris, you're a hero. If it wasn't for you, this baby carriage could have needed major repairs. <laughs> Well, Peterson, I guess you made your point. Paperboy 2000 is flawless, except if someone kicks it in the tire, it turns into an out-of-control killing machine. <laughs> it's starting to make sense why they banned this thing in Eastern Europe. I'm beginning to think that the risk to innocent people outweighs the extra $4 a week for human paperboys. You know something? Pending approval from the head office, we're rehiring all the old paperboys. Yeah! Oh, wait a second. Maybe I don't want your little job back, huh? Did you ever think about that? Maybe I want to be the tinfoil woodsman in the town, adored by all the children from now on. Well, you've got a better offer? No, I said maybe. Come on, what are you talking about? Of course I want my job back. Hey, everybody, I'm back. Yeah! And you know something? I think we've all kind of learned a valuable lesson here today, that a man no matter how puny or bald or overweight or bearded, can still have a place in today's society that's mostly ruled by corporate biddy bobbity boobity boos <laughs> And that one man's voice can still be heard over the endless drone of, of those that seem to drone on endlessly. And actually, what we shouldn't do is chit-chat, really, for tomorrow is Labor Day. <laughs> hey, where's everyone going? <coughs> Mandel singing to the Cub Scouts of America? Don't ask, just watch. It's an all-new Good Grief later tonight. This Friday, John Walsh hits the streets of New York to show you how violent crime is crippling the city and how ordinary citizens are fighting back on America's Most Wanted. Stay tuned now for Married with Children next.
short of one of those American gigolo come on in and clean my pipes type things. <laughs> come on, I'm joking. <laughs> hey, look at this place. Really charming. Nice. Can I give you one little suggestion? One word, end dust. <laughs> Young man, I've been watching you deliver my papers for some, what is it, 25 years now? It's actually 20 years. Please, I'm not an idiot. Oh, not at all. You're a special, special boy. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's what my teachers always used to say. <laughs> you know, I don't usually do this because I think it kind of cheapens me, but uh, I'm going to make a little exception here. To Mrs. Callan, keep on trucking, your pal, Chris. Oh, <laughs> thank there you. you. <laughs> oh. oh, what's this little figure? That's one of the keep on trucking guys. Remember them? They were very popular in the early 70s. They kind of stood like this. I don't know if you remember them or not. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not doing them justice, though. Their boots were much larger, almost exaggerated. <laughs> Can I have a cheese sandwich? Well, anyway, would you have any interest in house-sitting for a night? I have some urgent family business that will take me out of town. And with all the burglaries in this area, I'd feel better knowing that someone responsible was going to be in the house. And... I need someone to take care of my little dog, Louie. <laughs> That's a cute one. <laughs> Let me get this straight. I would have this place all to myself? Yes. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Chris, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm sorry. Well, look, uh, if I were to agree, I suppose there'd be uh, some sort of recompense in the form of uh, cash and prizes. I don't know what that means. Uh, I'll give you $50 and some chocolate. How's that? Sold American. Okay. Now, here is a list that I need to have you look at. Oh, so that... Okay, wait a second. Hold the phone. Stop the presses. I knew it was coming sooner or later. All the mind-numbing details. And don't worry, Mrs. Cohen. I'll take care of everything. I'll water the fruit, and I'll walk the kitty, and I'll dust the doilies. Ooh, and I won't sit in that chair because I belong to Grandpa Tootie. <laughs> you have a good time. Off you go. Have a good time at the ball. <laughs> Write me. <laughs> wow. Stupid salesman. Look, I don't want to buy... Chris, it's tomorrow night, not today. <laughs> that was an apology, Sire. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm stupid as I'm, like, bonkers. <laughs>
What's that smell? Well, that's actually a uh, delightful blend of uh, Lysol, um, boiled beef, and high karate. Really? Kind of smells like my grandmother's house. Well, you know, a lot of uh, tough guys are into that macho thing, but uh, I'm secure enough to get in touch with that little old lady inside of me. What's with all the, the knick-knacks and curio cabinets and doilies? Uh, well, um... These are action doilies, for men. <laughs> Billy Idol has a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Would you like a snack? Um, I've got diet ginger ale, mint tea. I uh... think I'll pass. Okay. So, kind of a cool bachelor pad, huh? What is this? Hmm. You mean this thing that uh, kind of looks like a walker? <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... Actually, uh, I'm not a flex. Uh, it's kind of like the parallel bars. I do a lot of working out on it. You know? and, uh, gotta give one of these go. Mm. Oh, oh. Ah. it's really good for your uh, trivoidals. Oh, wow, a piano. Can you play? Uh, well, no, I tinkle, really. Come on, play. I'm a sucker for musicians. Well, uh, if you put it that way, sure. <laughs> kind of uh, working on a, a piece right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, Beautiful Dreamer. Are you familiar with it? No. Hmm. It's kind of a jazz zydeco type thing. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful Dreamer. You are the sunshine of my eye. So don't go changing, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just pretend that I never showed up? No, no, wait, we're, we're supposed to have dinner. Hey, you know, I know a great pizza place not far from here, and they deliver all things. Why don't I give them a call and we'll have a pizza pie? <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is Chris Peterson calling from my own home at 1403 Maple. Yes, and I'd like to order a large pizza pie with everything except for mushrooms, pepperoni, sausage, onions, and all that other crap. <laughs> no, this is my home. No, she doesn't live here anymore. No, we had an argument. We broke up and I kicked her out. You know, I bet this isn't even your house. And you're probably not rich. Look, I gotta go. You know something? I was gonna give you a ceramic kitty of your choice, but now... In your dreams. You're a jerk. Okay, fine. That just means there's more pizza for me. Pizza. I don't need her. I don't need anybody. <laughs> I'll just watch some TV. No TV. Is that legal? <laughs> well, I just entertain myself the old-fashioned way. The way people used to entertain themselves before there was TV. I'll use my imagination. Probably just one of those normal house settling noises, something like that. <laughs> okay, there's nothing to be worried about. You're fine in a big old, comfortable, smelly, damp, eerie, weird Victorian house cut off from the rest of the world. There's nothing to be nervous about. <laughs> Hello, Larry. Hi. Um, are you and your lovely wife, Sharon, busy tonight? <laughs> Isn't this fun? We're playing parlor games. Larry, most married couples on Saturday night go out to dinner or dancing, a show Okay, maybe. enough. Ba -da -ba -da -da -da. It's my turn. Oh, doctor, must my kidney come out? Yes, Mr. Patient, I'm afraid it does. I pray your nose does not buzz. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> I did it! I beat you two again! <laughs> I'm the best! Boy, if I sent in my score, I bet I could get into any medical school in the country. <laughs> Larry, come on, one more game. Look, Chris, you've already won best out of 30. We're fatigued, tired... Nauseated. <laughs> come on, guys. Uh, how about Canasta? Or look, you, you could just spend the night here. Larry, you could take the bed. I'll, I'll take the sofa. Sharon, you can take the basement. <laughs> 
Yes, I think I'm starting to understand what it is you really want here. No, Sharon, believe me, it's not what you think. Although I feel that sexual tension as much as you do. <laughs> oh, you want us to stay here because you're scared. Little Chrissy Peterson's scared to stay in a big old creepy gothic God only knows who died here house. <laughs> Be a moron. I'm not afraid of anything. Really? Not even what's behind you? All right, Sharon, that's the oldest trick in the book. I'm not turning around. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not, not going to do it, Sharon. It's just a trick. I'm not going to turn around. You're not going to make me turn around. Mm-mm. Look, I'm not turning around. I'm not. See, I didn't turn around. You know, this is kind of fun. Maybe we could stay a little longer. All right, wait, guys. All right, I'll be honest with you. Yes, I am scared. The fact is, I am scared out of my butt. There's strange noises in this place, and, you know, I'm not superstitious at all, but I think there may actually be monsters in here. Did you guys hear that? No. What the hell was that? Good night, idiot. <laughs> Larry. I gotta pull myself together. I gotta collect my thoughts. I'm a man. I'm gonna call mom. <laughs> Oh, hi, Daddy. It's Chris. How's it going? I just called to say hi and so we could do a little catching up. How's your health? Chris, you've only been gone three hours. Well, I know, but I didn't want us to drift apart. Heaven forbid. You know, Dad, I was just thinking, maybe I should come home. I mean, you know, with all the burglaries in the neighborhood, you know, I'm young and healthy and, and I can defend myself. But you and Mom are old and feeble. You're the prime candidates to be bludgeoned to death. We'll take that chance. You better stay put. You have a responsibility, son. You promised Mrs. Cowan you'd look after her house, and you can't go back on your word. All right, Dad, put Mom on. You're starting to annoy me now. <laughs> Hello, dear. How's it going? Mom, I'm really scared. And I didn't want to tell Dad because he'd think I was a pansy. Don't worry, son. He already thinks that. <laughs> oh, this, this house is really spooky. And I'm starting to hear strange noises. What kind of noises? Well, off the top of my head? I, I don't know. Stuff like, uh... Boo! 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 Stuff like that? It's probably the house settling. You're just a little punchy because you're tired. Why don't you go to sleep? Hey, Ma, I, I know this sounds a little silly, but uh, would you mind singing me one of those lullabies that used to send me off to dreamland? <laughs> of course, honey. When the shark bites with his teeth, dear, scarlet ribbons start to spread. Fancy gloves, though, where's Mac Heath, dear? Though there's never... A trace of red <laughs> on the sidewalk Sunday morning lies a body oozing like okay, there's, there's nothing to be frightened of it's just a window rattle <laughs> that's what they're supposed to do it happens all the time that's why they're called windows <laughs> okay I'm very close to crying now <laughs> I thought you were a bloodthirsty killer with a knife <laughs> And you're just a little froggy, plain as day <laughs> Maybe some candy will soothe my stomach Probably one of those new fad candies like Pop Rocks. <laughs> okay, right, well, well, that's the number for me. <laughs> Hello, police? Yeah, hi, this is Chris Peterson at 1403 Maple. I'm house sitting for an old lady, and uh, the house is making some awfully strange noises, and the candy just caught fire. Yeah, I don't know what code that would be, probably a 916, something like that, probably a very high number. <laughs> 
Listen, could you send a patrolman over to spend the night with me? Oh, you can't. Ah, uh, what do you mean I'm tying up the line? Well, I... Oh, it's a felony. Oh, it's a felony. Beep! Oh, there goes my call waiting. Okay, I'm gonna have to go. Thanks for calling. Oh, I called you. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Wait, there's that 24-hour line that helps men. Hi, thanks for calling Candy's Fantasy Line. Who am I speaking to? Chris Peterson. Mm, that's a sexy name. What are you wearing, Chris? Uh, I'm wearing a shirt and slacks and shoes and socks and underpants. Why are you asking me that? Are you drunk? What are you into, Chris? Well, I'm into talking to somebody right now because I'm a little scared of ghosts. Listen, honey, you're going to have to be a little more specific about what you want because I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Ah, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Oh, oh, ah! Oh! It's turned into an evil serpent! Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Candy? Candy, are you there? Oh, no. Oh, no, they're, they're out there snipping the lines. The phone's dead. It's that, it's that Manson group. It's, it's Squeaky and, and Tex and, and Lenny and Squiggy. <laughs> Who's there? Pizza. Oh, yeah, right. You can't be the pizza guy. I ordered pizza five hours ago and it never came. So obviously his truck's overturned in a drainage ditch somewhere. Go ahead, try again. You don't take this pizza that comes out of my pocket and that makes me mad! You're a burglar. Go ahead, admit it. No, I'm not! You open that door! Well, then you're a zombie. I saw Night of the Living Dead. The good version. The black and white version. The one everyone talks about. <laughs> Stay out and leave me alone. Uh, oh, oh my God. It's the devil dog hell from hell. you want. It's a great country. Well, second thought, why don't you go back to where you came from, which is hell or, or maybe someplace worse. Oh, please, I pray that's just bad plumbing. complete neurological workup. <laughs> Don't panic. Don't panic. I'm sure you can make everything look nice and spiffy before she gets here. It's me, Mrs. Cowan. The door seems to be stuck. Oh, no. I'm dead. Oh, no. And I just know she's not going to pay me now. There's probably going to be some litigation involved with this, too. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Welcome home. <laughs> Did you bring me anything? <laughs> I'm just joking. You know, because when I was a little boy and my parents used to go off on trips, they'd always have to bring me a little gift back. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd cry and I'd cry. <laughs> I mean, you know how kids are. <sighs> Do you like pudding? What in God's name happened here? 
Oh, uh, well, you must be referring to the fact that things look a little askew. Yeah, uh, well, you know, it got kind of blustery last night. This is irreplaceable. Well, you know, I'm no antiquarian, but I'm, I'm fairly certain you can go down to Woolworths and get a crate of these for about 20 bucks. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Cowan, I can't lie to you. There's something dreadfully wrong with your house. I don't know what it is. It's, it's either evil spirits or, or really bad carpentry, but it was a nightmare <laughs> last night. It was... Uh... Hey! Hold it right there! That ass! <laughs> Oh, so you did all this. You destroyed my home. Hey, yeah. Yeah, that works. Yeah, he did all this. <laughs> Little mister, take what doesn't belong to him, huh? You are a fiend, sir. Hey, wait a minute. I tried to rob you, but I'd never leave a mess. If this jerk hadn't went nuts and barricaded the door, I would have been out of here hours ago. <laughs> Who are you going to believe? Mr. Chop him up and stuff him under the floorboards? Or me, Chris Peterson, American Paperboy, Deluxe? Hey, you gotta believe me. He may even be dangerous. Hey, hey, shut up unless you want another ceramic kitty shut Language, and... young man, language. I'm sorry, ma'am. Like you've never used language like that before. <laughs> I guess it's time to call the police. Uh, boy, you don't know what a relief it was to find out there was somebody upstairs all night boy with all those noises i was starting to think i was going a little crazy you know like a time to take me off to the rubber room in the funny jacket <laughs> but now i know i'm i'm as sane and healthy as apple pie <laughs> hey no dial tone i assume we all saw that saw what yeah what okay excuse me now while i go do this Go ahead. No second chances. You'll witness the most death-defying feats ever attempted on the world's greatest stunts. A one-hour special later tonight. And this Thursday, tune in to Fox for special Thanksgiving episodes of The Simpsons and Babes. Can you think of a better way to spend the holiday than laughing? Now stay tuned for Married with Children next. Mom, Dad, listen to this. <clears throat> the Greenville Community Theater will be holding auditions today for their upcoming production of the musical Zoo Animals on Wheels. Prior singing, acting, and dancing experience a plus, but not necessary. Know what that means? Well, I'm not Kreskin, but I think it means you're on the verge of embarrassing us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I didn't know you were interested in acting, dear. I'm not interested in acting, huh? I just have the urge to perform on stage in an animal costume. <laughs> There's a difference, you know. Chris, why this show? It sounds a little... What's the word I'm looking for? Stupid. <laughs> Dad, Zoo Animals on Wheels was the toast of Broadway. It was Andrew Todd Keller's masterpiece. The concept is pure genius. What would it be like if Zoo Animals put on roller skates, danced around and sang songs. Do you know what that does for an audience? Insults their intelligence? No. It uplifts them. It makes them feel happy and alive. Kind of like a Mountain Dew commercial. <laughs> I better get going. Mom, Dad, I'm walking out of here as Chris, but I may very well come back as Chris, the guy who has a small part in a local musical. You think about that for a while. <laughs>
Wow. Excuse me, miss. Um, can you tell me where the auditions are being held for the zoo? Sharon! Oh, my God, I'm in shock. Here I thought you were just a normal housewife and all along you had a secret job as a janitor. <laughs> what are you doing, ordering some more urinal pads? For your information, ass, I happen to be head chairperson of the Greenville Players. I'm also lead actress in this production. So what would that be, the role of the town whore? <laughs> What the hell are you doing here, anyway? Five simple words, Sharon. I'm here to audition. Missy? <laughs> you! Audition for a place in my theater group? Oh, I think you've been breathing too much newspaper ink, Chris. Cackle all you like, Margaret Hamilton. But I'm gonna land a role in this play. over my dead body. Cause you're born free. Thank you very much, Police Chief Shea, for a very stirring. Oh, sorry, I screwed up the second verse. I'm a little smashed. <laughs> That's quite all right. Thank you. Bye. Next up, uh, Chris Peterson. This is the guy I was telling you about. Brace yourself. <laughs> I, I was prepared to come out here and, and give you a little example of my singing voice, but I was just informed that your pianist doesn't have the sheet music to Dreamweaver. <laughs> um, so instead, I thought I'd recite to you a little fable. And I can only pray that you do not gong me. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a small Midwestern village, there lived a young, handsome goose who wanted desperately to be in a local production of a hit musical. <laughs> On his way to the audition, the goose met up with an evil, ugly ape named Sharon. <laughs> Sharon told the goose that he couldn't appear in the play because she was queen ape of the theater company and there were no geese allowed. But the goose decided to ignore the ugly ape and audition anyway. <laughs> the funny thing is that my fable has no ending. <laughs> I, I leave that in your capable hands, my dear director. <laughs> and now, as a little bonus, I'm gonna dance for you. Okay, honey, hit it. Is he pathetic or what? He's perfect. He's exactly what I'm looking for. Someone who's naive and innocent, almost bordering on dimwitted. Someone I can shape and sculpt. He's an airhead. I mean, if you put him in this production, they'll shut us down like they do freak shows in the South. <laughs> at our male lead. Are you insane? What about Jason? He's been our male lead for the last 10 years. It was done. <sighs> Stop, Mr. Peterson. Congratulations. You have just landed the male lead in our production of Zoo Animals on Wheels. Huh? Rehearsals begin tomorrow at noon. See you then. <laughs> oh. Oh, sir. Oh, I'd just like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> you know, in a world full of cynics and pessimists and anesthesiologists, it's, it's comforting to know that fairy tale endings can indeed come true. <laughs> I feel like Cinderella <laughs> in more ways than I care to go into. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I shan't let you down. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. <laughs> They say the neon lights are bright on Broadway. Now, they say there's this pivotal scene where Chris, the sickly wildebeest, kisses Sharon, her 
Royal Highness, Lady Stripes. We must believe that their love is conveyed not only from their lips, but from their soul. Guess what, Sharon? I had a sub for lunch. <laughs> They say the women treat you fine on Broadway But looking at them just gives me the blues Cause how you For God's sake, look at him, William. He's an embarrassment. He's turning a fine piece of theater into something silly and ridiculous. Don't be a fool. A man's unique. He's an enigma. I haven't witnessed this much stage presence in a performer since I saw Red Fox at the Tropicana. <laughs> they say that I won't last too long on Broadway. I've kept a greyhound bus for home. It's showtime, folks. Can you stand being Peterson's understudy? Don't you feel just a little insulted that a hideous, untalented moron has the role that you should play? What can I do, Cher? If I complain, the whole cast would think I was a class A number one bitch. <laughs> Obviously, our dear director has a thing for fat, balding amateur types. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he'll probably have to stand trial for killing the play. <laughs> Fine, have it your way. Sharon, I wouldn't appear on the same stage with you for all the money in the ocean. <laughs> and you, you're lucky I'm a gentleman and would never strike a lady. <laughs> Has anyone seen Chris? I have some last-minute instructions for him regarding the scene where he wrestles the evil monkey. I'll tell you what happened. He overheard these two magpies trashing him and he ran off. Now, William, regardless of what caused Peterson's departure, we should feel lucky that we have Jason to take his place. Well, I don't feel very lucky, you wench. Chris Peterson absolutely embodies the total spirit of zoo animals on wheels. Sharon, all of Greenville is out there. You either get Chris back right now, I don't care what it takes, or I'll see to it that you never work in this worthless two-bit hick town again. <laughs> For the record, I think you both are a couple of class A number one bitches. <laughs> You know, I, I, I think that we should clear the air and, and not let a silly misunderstanding ruin our friendship. Chris, sweetheart, where are you, sugar? Chris? Oh, so, here you are. <laughs> My, how lovely like a little retreat. How did you find me? Well, it wasn't hard. I just followed the gobs of makeup. <laughs> well, here I am, where I belong, in my new home. Since I played a dog in the show, I guess I belong in a doghouse. Chris, play a wildebeest in the show. Wildebeest, skunk, dingo, what's the difference? They're all in the dog fan. <laughs> Sometimes I get the... Oh, pardon me. Excuse me, very much. Chris, I... Chris? Sometimes I get the impression that you think I don't like you. 
Now, just because a person goes through her life loathing, criticizing, and ridiculing another person doesn't mean she hates him. Sometimes it means just the opposite. Yeah, I think that's how it works on the planet Venus. I came after you because I think it's high time I recognize your many admirable qualities. Okay, go ahead, name them. Well, uh... Here, let me give you a little hint. Okay. I'm extremely good. I can't say that, Chris. Please don't make me. Okay, fine. I'll just stay here then. My God, are you an attractive man. What a handsome man you are. I wonder how good an actor I am. Oh, I wish I had a little feedback on that. Chris, you're a fabulous actor. You're the best thing in the play. Then all that stuff you and Jason were saying, I, I guess, could it be that you guys were just, uh, jealous? Jealous, absolutely. My God, you're psychic. All right. I guess you've kissed enough wildebeest butt for one night. I'll come back. First, I have one last important question. Yes. Which one of these dogs has gas? <laughs> Since the beginning of time, zoo animals have sat patiently in their cages while we humans stared, pointed, and threw candy at them. But oh, what a magical day it would be if these confined beasts could leap from their cages, free to sing, free to frolic, free to roller skate. All right, Gladys, that ought to do it. Let's go. Free to sing. I'm a giraffe, I'm a giraffe, I'm a giraffe, I'm a giraffe, I have a long neck, I have a long neck, cause I'm a giraffe, I'm a giraffe. Clear something up for me, Gladys. Is he a giraffe? <laughs> I'd like to throw a rock at her. <laughs> shoot me, Gladys. I'll give you a million bucks. Just shoot me. <laughs> Proud yet frail from my nose to my tail. But here's the good news I've got wheels on my shoes, and with some music to guide me, I know I can lose. Everybody! Opening friends. Boom, boom. <laughs> Don't be sad, wise old jellicle hippo. I know you're dying of thirst and this village has no water. But hey, I know something that'll make you happy. What's the one thing all zoo animals love when they're sad? A light show! <laughs> That's right, a light show with disco music. Everyone dance. <laughs> Gladys, is it actually medically possible to die of embarrassment? <laughs> Living in a zoo can be very sad People stare at you and make you mad Oh, ha 
now I wonder what they would do If animals stared at them like they were in a zoo Okay, Gladys, now's our chance. Let's get out of here while he's distracted. You think it'll be all right? Yeah, the guy in the llama suit will back him up. Move it, Sealy. Out of my way, you meddling guardsman, for I have a date with Her Royal Highness, Lady Stripes. You, a poor homely wildebeest, have a date with Lady Stripes. That is so funny a thought, I think we shall laugh now. <laughs> Silence! Silence, you wretched hyenas. Oh my, suddenly we're very quiet, aren't we? From this day forward, no one shall mock the fat, kindly wildebeest. I don't remember the word fat being in the script. Oh, be gone, servants. For you have just insulted my future prince. Oh, your highness. I am at a loss for words. I guess the only thing left for us to do is kiss each other. Oh, God. The old man never gave you one like that, huh? <laughs> and now, we shall rule the animal kingdom together as man and wife. And here's our first proclamation. No more zoos, no more cages, only roller skates, disco music, and an occasional light show. So zoo animals, rejoice! For we are all free! Pretending to enjoy something you actually didn't is an important adult social skill. Nice job, Sharon. Linda Blair couldn't have done it better herself. Why, thank you, Chris. You actually ended up doing quite well yourself. Congratulations. You know, Sharon, I don't think I can keep this moment to myself. <laughs> Give me a second, excuse me. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, hi. Can I have your attention for one moment, please? Thank you. I would just like to say that doing this play has been the most wonderful experience of my life, mainly because I forged a relationship with my leading lady, the very lovely, the very talented, Miss Sharon Potter. Sharon, come out here. Now, I would like to make one thing perfectly clear, however, that despite our steamy, passionate love scene during the play, uh, offstage, Sharon and I do not jump each other's bones. Although, uh, given uh, the opportunity, and I think I speak for Sharon, uh, we probably could, because during our now legendary kiss, I think we both felt uh, peculiar stirrings, you know where. 
So, uh, the next uh, 350 performances are gonna be kind of interesting, if you know what I mean. <laughs> ah! There's, there's no Indian headquarters. That's George Washington. Okay, Mr. Numismatic. Then explain the headdress. It's a ponytail. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, this has to be rare, then. George Washington dressed up as a woman. <laughs> Here. Look at this, Larry. <laughs> it's an old Playboy magazine. <laughs> you know what, buddy? This is a little gift from me to you, because you're married to Sharon, and you probably need it a little more than I do. Uh, I knew it. Here it is. The Beatles did do Hey Jude. Ha 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 ha, pay up. Jeez, I could have sworn it was Peter and Gordon. What's this? Look, Larry. It's a picture of me as a baby with a couple of pilgrims. Chris, they're not pilgrims, they're Amish. Amish? Well, I, I don't ever remember meeting any Amish people when I was one. What else is in here? Just a couple pictures and this, a receipt. Let me see this. One baby... Boy, Emmett. Ten, zero, zero, zero. Larry. Larry, do you know what this means? No, but I have a feeling you have some stupid theory. <laughs> Larry, all the pieces of the puzzle are there. Put them together. It's not one of those difficult puzzles either, like, like the kitten with the marbles. What are you saying? I'm saying that the Petersons bought me from an Amish couple for $10,000 on the black market. <laughs> that can't be right. Larry, it all makes sense. That's why I don't have any brothers or, or any sisters. They were too cheap to buy anymore. <laughs> but Larry, look. Look at Daddy. I'm his spitting image. Chris, you look nothing like this guy. Well, come on. You make his beard a little blonder. You take away the black unstylish clothing, give him some snappy sportswear from Banana Republic, and you got me. Chris, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm not Chris. I'm Emmett. A healthy white Amish baby sold to a couple of two-bit carpetbaggers. <laughs> Larry, I'm adopted. Hold me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I finally know the truth, Mr. and Mrs. Peterson. I know I'm going to regret this question, Gladys, but just what do you mean by that, Chris? <laughs> well, for openers, you're not my real mother and father. Okay, for closes, then. <laughs> how cavalier, how laissez-faire, how plucky plock. Honey, <laughs> we'd never be plucky plock with you. <laughs> oh, Ma, you don't have to put up a front for me any longer. Those days are gone, long forgotten, like my size four underpants. I now know the hideous, ugly, tragic truth. What the hell are you talking about? I found out that I'm adopted. Are you nuts, boy? 
Oh, don't try to deny it, Mr. Peterson. It's obvious we look nothing alike. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding. For better or worse, we're mirror images. <laughs> oh, yeah, I believe that. And I guess Scott Thorson was born looking exactly like Liberace. <laughs> look, it's obvious that you've had extensive plastic surgery to make yourself look more like me. God, Dad, that's fiendish. Chris, haven't we warned you to always crack a window when you use magic markers? <laughs> I don't know why I'm even talking to you. You're my landlord. Our conversations should be limited to stuff like, here's my rent check, sir. My sink is still broken. Good morrow to you. Chris, don't be an ass. We're your parents. Lying is only going to make it worse, Ma. But then again, I guess my whole life has been a lie, hasn't it? All that matters now is that you admit it. Come on, Dad. Be a man. Admit it. Dear, there's nothing to admit. To, to Emmett? Emmett. You, you just called me Emmett. No, you did. I heard you. I heard Emmett, clear as a bell. You called me Emmett. After all these years, you finally let your card down. I can't believe it. Oh, I'm suddenly so disoriented. Everything seems alien to me. Oh. You're just a little goofy because you have an empty stomach. Why don't I fix you a sandwich? I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not allowed to take lunch from strangers. I think I know what has to be done now. Thanks for 30 years of shelter, clothing, and three square meals a day of lies. <laughs> Gladys, unless you think I should be concerned about this, I think I'll go take a nap. Pleasant dreams, dear. Why don't you just use a suitcase, Chris? For the last time, I'm not Chris, I'm Emmett. And I have to travel all the way to the Pennsylvania Dutch country to be reunited with my natural Amish parents. But until that time, I must carry all my belongings in a simple handkerchief tied to a stick. For at this point, I am nothing but a lowly bastard hobo. <laughs> Comprende? It's ironic that your Spanish was the most decipherable thing in that whole speech. Chris, I can't believe you're going through with this. Larry, I have no choice. I can't rest until I'm reunited with my true parents and my ancestral homeland. The Petersons are your true parents. I'm 99.9% .9 sure of that. Yeah, but it's that point two thirds that's sending me back to the boonies. This is a crazy thought. Forgive my wild imagination, but has it ever occurred to you that perhaps you're wrong? Well, yeah, actually that did occur to me. But when I confronted Fred and, and what's her name, they just denied it. Which is exactly what guilty people do when they sweep adopted dirt underneath the rug. But you know, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Because technically, you're not even my friend. You're actually Chris Peterson's friend. Geez, I wonder how many other friends they have on the payroll. That's an insult. I wouldn't be your friend for any amount of money. Well, that wasn't exactly phrased right, but you get the point. Well, whatever. I'm off to the Pennsylvania Dutch country. And please, don't try to stop me. And whatever you do, do not tell Fred and Gladys, because it would destroy them. They've grown fond of this charade called Chris Peterson. Well, don't you think they'll notice that you're missing? Not for the first couple of weeks. Besides, they just try to track me down and buy me back. Everything is money with those people. <laughs> so promise, okay? Okay, I promise. No. <laughs> <laughs> look, if you're ever near the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch country, why don't you look me up? Do you even know where the Pennsylvania Dutch country is? Well, not exactly. I, I have a feeling it's somewhere near the troubled Gaza Strip. <laughs> I'll find it. <laughs>
Emma. Emmett's home. <laughs> I wonder what's keeping Chris. I put his breakfast down this morning and it's getting cold. Oh, uh, he's probably off watching a miniseries someplace. <laughs> Hello? Mr. and Mrs. Peterson? Hi. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Well, yeah, Larry. Uh, Gladys and I were just sitting here trying to figure out how to get the bugs out of the Hubble telescope. <laughs> Mr. Peterson, you always crack me up. It's nice to see you, Larry. What's new? Is your old man still running around with that redhead? Fred. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Peterson, do you know how it is when you have a terrible secret gnawing at you? No. And you've got to tell somebody? Oh, Fred and I have lots of horrible secrets we keep from each other. That's right. I don't mind a bit. I got a few that would knock her socks off. God, I can't take it anymore. I'm racked with guilt. Larry, did Chris ever mention our short attention span? It's just that he made me promise not to tell you. Not to tell us what? Yeah, out with it, boy. Come on. Okay, okay, you've broken me. He's run away from home. Can you do that when you're 30? Can you have a paper route when you're 30? Hey, don't make me get up from this table. Why would Chris run away from home? To find his real parents. He thinks he's been adopted. I thought we cleared that up. Yes, that's not one of our horrible secrets. What about the picture of him with the Amish couple? What the hell's he talking about? You know, the picture of Chris as a baby being held by an Amish couple. He found it in the attic. So what? We've also got a picture of him with Santa Claus. That must be from our vacation in the Pennsylvania Dutch country. Yeah, that's right. We went there when the health department closed down Reptile Land. And we took a picture of him with an Amish couple, even though it was against every fiber of their religious beliefs. Yeah, they probably got thrown in the hole for it. Oh, I guess. You guys took a vacation to Pennsylvania Dutch country when Chris was a baby and took a souvenir picture of him with an Amish couple. Nice work. Make some mantle space for that Nobel. <laughs> oh, no. Now Chris has gone off to find some strangers and we're never going to see him again. I wouldn't hold my breath. But Mr. Peterson, don't you understand? You've got to go find him and bring him back. Look, boy, the only thing I've got to do is die and pay taxes. <laughs> oh, Fred, spare us the tired old cliches. Put on your street shoes. We're going to get our Chris back. Uh, Mama, we've uh, been standing out here staring at each other for ten minutes. Aren't you going to invite me in? I mean, you know, this is my home now, too. Marta? Who goes? Papa? Is that you? Oh, my God, of course it's you. What am I saying? The resemblance in the eyes is uncanny. <laughs> Of course, I have a little different taste in clothing, but, you know, that's my generation. Hi. Hi. Who are you? Well, don't you recognize me? I'm your long-lost son, Emmett, and I finally come home. What do you want from us? Well, I want what we once had, uh, one big happy family. <laughs> and my dream has come true. We're all back together again. Reunited and it feels so good. <laughs> what a touching moment. So, what do you say we all come inside, uh, shoot the bull, and throw back some brews? Oh, my. Wow. A disturbed city dweller. We had better humor him or he may attack us. Jeez, everything's so plain and... Unfancy. <laughs> you know, there's a new word. It's called color. <laughs> you might want to put that one in your Rolodex. <laughs> Gee, so you got ten grand for me and uh, you still live like this? <laughs> what, do you guys have a gambling problem or something? We are simple people. Farmers. Oh, well, that's great. That's perfect. I'll fit in fine. I'm simple, too. <laughs> you know, uh, I had a heck of a time finding you guys. Uh, the traffic out there is just horrendous. It was, uh... uh Bridle to bridle. <laughs> oh, my. Hey, what are we doing standing around gabbing? Star Trek The Next Generation is on in about five minutes. I don't know what you speak. Well, you know, where's your home entertainment center? Your, your big screen TV slash stereo slash waffle maker slash dealy slash... Thing. All we have is a fireplace on the loom. Wow. Party. Yes. Gosh, you guys are worse off than I thought. <laughs> but don't worry. Your luck has changed. The people you sold me to were, were very good to me. And I've returned home as 
is your sugar daddy. Now hold on to your bonnets. I'm going to bring you into the 20th century. <laughs> now where would that be? Huh. It's got to be around here somewhere. Hey, Dad, where's the outlet? We have no electricity. Are you kidding? Did they shut it off? Jeez. <laughs> you know, you, you really got to watch that kind of stuff, because that, that could end up on your TRW. That's... <laughs> That's a credit report, Mom. <laughs> Women. You know, when it comes to money, it's like they're on another planet. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's wrong with you two? Come on, this is supposed to be a joyous occasion. Your son Emmett is home. Put on your happy faces. <sighs> it's better. Mom, I've got a little surprise for you. It's a gay scarf. <laughs> now don't faint Pierre Cardin <laughs> See, all you had to do was accessorize a little bit We are humble folk We shun the ways of the outside world That is the custom of our people Oh Oh, geez, well I, I guess if I'm gonna live here I, I guess I ought to accept your, your humble, simple ways <laughs> Sure, I'm gonna miss my water pick <laughs> I guess something tells me, though, I won't be running into Claudia Schiffer at the supermarket, if you know what I mean. <laughs> time to murder him. Only our religion did not forbid it. If only. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh, I hope you don't mind. I found these clothes upstairs and I just kind of threw them on. I look nice and plain, don't I? Like a sexy young Amish lad. <laughs> well, it's 5.30 a.m. and everybody's up. Hippity hoppity, pippity poppity. What, do you guys all have paper routes here or something? Sir, if we fed you, would you leave us? No. No, of course not. <laughs> You're so insecure. No. I'm here forever. <laughs> I'll get it, Papa. Oh. Fred, Gladys. Oh, no, more of them. What are you doing here? We've come to take you home, you idiot. This is now my home. Couldn't you run away to a place like Florida or something? Say, do you have a TV around here? Brigitte Nielsen's going to be on the Today Show. We do not have Faust Electronics. We are simple people, and we shun the ways of your people with your pre-sweetened cereals and your silent dog whistles. So be gone, you hedonistic, button-pushing, fancy pants. I don't know he hasn't changed. Chris, I must admit you look very smart in a hat. For the last time, I am not Chris. I am Emmett Stoltzfoots, son to Jedediah and Marta Stoltzfoots. We're the Stoltzfootses. <laughs> Ed, tell him I'm your son. Come on. But you're not our son. So you bought their silence, too, huh? Like you buy everything else with your filthy money. What money? Like the $10,000 you paid for me on the black market. Are you nuts? I never had $10,000 in my life. Don't deny it. I have the receipt right here. Look at this. One baby boy, Emmett, $10,000. What? One baby bonnet. 
ten dollars. That's the receipt from the Amish baby bonnet we bought for you years ago, and this must be the nice Amish couple we bought it from. We even took a picture of you with them. I told you no good could come from being photographed. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I don't know what to say. This is worse than when I was sleepwalking through the neighborhood in my mom's robe. Oh, can we get the hell out of here now? Wait a second, Dad. Not so fast. You know, I'm, I'm a little torn here. I, I mean, you two have, have been my parents for the last 15 hours, and I can't throw that away. You know, there's a bond that happens between a a mother and a, a child. And that bond can never be broken. How oh, I love you so dearly. <laughs> Maybe we could work out a six-month exchange program? No. Oh, no. <laughs> well, then I guess this is goodbye. Papa, I want you to know that your simple ways will always be a part of me. But to be honest, I, I never had the cheekbones to carry off that cute beard without a mustache look anyway. <laughs> and Mama, you know, I never did taste your, your meat, kraut, hash, sour, broughten pies, but, uh, you know, I don't really like those heavy Italian sauces, and, and actually, they don't like me either. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> so I guess as E.T. used to say, and we'll be right there. <laughs> Chris, they're Amish. They probably haven't seen a movie since Spartacus. I'm so sorry. Well, I'll miss you both dearly. Hey, listen, do you mind if I keep this outfit? My skin just kind of comes alive in black. Take whatever you want. Just get out. I, I, I mean that in the most Christian sense. I'm sorry if Chris has been a lot of trouble to you. You know how kids are. Do you have any of your own? Yeah, but they're all married and on their own. That is the way with our people. Well, normally, that's the way of our people, too. But... <laughs> yeah, but then we'd be gypped out of precious moments like these. <laughs> hey, you know, since this is kind of, well, kind of a backwards sort of family reunion of sorts, um, what do you say we got one of those where-are-they-now pictures, huh? What <laughs> a great idea. Hey, Pop, why don't you do the honors? Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, let's do this just like the other one. And I think in the other one, um, you were actually holding me, Papa, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Now can we please go? Sure. <laughs> uh, wait. Hold on a second here. <clears throat> um, Dad, if I'm not adopted, could you please explain this to me? <laughs> oh. Well, Chris, we just took that picture a second ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> oh, my. Uh. <laughs> Will a little bruise bring big bucks? Find out on an all-new Simpsons, followed by an all-new Babes and Beverly Hills 90210. Hey, Dad, what's the first line to Octopus's Garden? Isn't it something like, hey, little octopus, deep in the ocean, you have a pretty garden, can I borrow some lotion? <laughs> something like that? Well, that's close enough. I think that's how they sang it in Beatlemania. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. It's all part of my ongoing curiosity and fascination with marine life in ocean Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi. I just thought I'd say a quick adios before I head off on my whitewater rafting trip this weekend. You've got to be kidding me. Hell no, Dad. And consider the facts. I'm going by myself. I've never gone whitewater rafting before in my life. And I don't even know where the nearest river is. Sounds pretty exciting, doesn't it? Aren't you forgetting something, honey? The Peterson family reunion is today. And you're not getting out of it. So you better unstrap that little paddle and start preparing to be miserable the way we're doing. <laughs> no, no, no. Please, please, please. I hate the family reunion. I hate it. I, I'd rather go to a livestock auction and get kicked in the face by a giant donkey. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. My hands are tied. It's my turn to host the damn thing, and I can't weasel out of it. Oh, come on, Dad. Be a weasel for once in your life. Take it from me, you'll find that it's 
really the most wonderful experience in the whole wide world. Don't be a simp, honey. In a few short hours, this place will be crawling with Petersons. We can't back out now. Wait a second. Hold the, you know, the thing that you pick up and you, you dial and you talk to people. Are you saying that Donald is going to be here today? Well, of course. He's your cousin, isn't he? No, 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 please. I hate Donald. I despise him. I detest him. I loathe him. I abhor him. I abominate him. I knew we'd regret giving him that thesaurus. I don't know why you dislike Donald, sweetheart. Just because he's your age, is a huge success, and owns his own melon stand, is no reason to feel threatened by him. Oh, I wish he was dead. Donald. Donald, Donald, Donald. My arch nemesis. Ever since childhood. It gives me great pleasure now to present this sterling silver trophy and a $50 savings bond to Donald. The Peterson with the most wit, charisma, and intelligence. He's the jewel of our tribe, and he's no doubt headed for greatness. Yuck! And for young Kenny here... Dead Chris. Uh, sorry. For Chris, I have this stick I found laying on the ground over there. Let's hear it for my boy. He'll make a great rodeo clown one day, won't he? Just in case you didn't get the news flash. Oh, I'm better than you. Oh, hey. Fred, stop him. He's having another one of his bizarre Donald flashbacks. Stop him, hell. I'm gonna go grab the video camera. <laughs>
Give me my food and shut your trap. Hey, put her way back there so we don't have to deal with her. <laughs> care for a Swiss vanilla boo-boo? Swiss vanilla what? Hell, boy, that's just saltwater taffy. You know, I thought so. But for some reason, my dad told me I had to call them Swiss vanilla boo-boos. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks for making an ass out of me. Does anyone know when Donald is coming? I don't know, but I hope he gets here soon. I love that Donald. Oh, Donald is the smartest boy in the world. Do you know, I heard he wants fixed a clock radio with just a butter knife and Elmer's glue. Oh, that sounds like Donald. He's always doing something smart. Not like that dope kid of Fred's. Somebody told me that Donald just bought himself an 84 Chevette. 84? Hell, an 85 with only 40,000 miles on it. Cash for it, too. That's Donald for you. I heard that Donald's melon stand is doing so good, he's adding another nine feet to sell grapes. Hey, can you beat that? What will Donald think of next? <laughs> This Donald is delicious. I just put a new Donald in my truck. Now she runs like a top. I heard the weather tomorrow is supposed to be cloudy with the chance of Donald. Attention, everyone. Donald will be here shortly. Repeat, Donald, the successful genius who probably invented this very megaphone, will be here shortly. You have to help me. It's like I'm losing my mind. It's like everyone here is talking about Donald, and, and that's all they're talking about. Donald? Donald, 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 Donald. Oh, my goodness, what happened to my son? Oh, he's just taking a nap. Look, Donald's here. Oh. Hey, look up, boy. Oh, Cousin's here. Oh, 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 Donald, thank God you're here. We were so worried. Good to see you, Donald. We were just talking about how smart you are. Donald, can I kiss your hand just for good luck? Come on, it's got a siren. Want to play with it? I love you, Donald. Oh, Donald, 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 the little newsboy. How are you, Christopher? <laughs> Lovely clothes you're wearing these days. I know drifters who are more fashion conscious. <laughs> That's your style, isn't it? Picking on poor, helpless, sweet, innocent drifters. The salt of the earth and the backbone of our country. <laughs> Tell me, Christina, when you're not busy delivering your little newspapers and acting like a moron and boring people with idiotic conversation, what do you do in your spare time? Oh, I pretty much go on dates with your mom. She tries to fit me in between the furnace repairman and the high school janitor. It's so sad. Your obvious lack of significant income is causing you to lash out at those... greater than yourself. No, it's my obvious lack of patience for little geek wussy boys who dress up like carpet salesmen and who wear cologne that smells like cat urine. Okay, I see I'm gonna have to go in for the kill. This is my bank book. Read it and weep. Oh, that's right. A nine followed by two zeros. Now let's see yours. Um, well, my daddy keeps mine in a safe deposit box down at the bank. Yeah, yeah, a likely story. Well, 
I think I'll move on. There are dozens of people here just waiting in line to kiss my butt. Could I have everyone's attention, please? I know you're all still giddy about the free melons that Donald brought us, but uh, listen up for a minute. I'd like to invite each of you to come up here now and give us kind of an update on what you've been doing this past year. You go first, Fred. Yeah, you go oh, first. Yeah, Fred. Well, this last 12 months, I've just been sitting around drinking coffee and dreading today. <laughs> oh, okay, who's next? As most of you probably know, I had to fire the boy that cuts our grass because I caught him stealing a power drill out of the garage. I actually got to spray the little bastard with some mace, so that was nice. <laughs> Basically, what my urologist told me was to drink lots of cranberry juice. <laughs> So he's bleeding and cursing up a storm, so I says, Hey, sorry, with that haircut, you look like a deer. <laughs> this last year has been one of great personal satisfaction for me. As most of you know, I've continued to prosper. To say that I'm a huge success, well, that would be an understatement. I'm a phenomenal. <laughs> This is like a 1960 Democratic convention. <laughs> but I also believe in giving back to the community. And that's why just a few short months ago, when my minister needed some money for a new space heater for his trailer, I handed the guy 10 bucks. No. <laughs> Here's a Xerox of the cancel check. I'll pass it around. Well, thank you one and all, and keep hope alive. <laughs> Donald's the greatest thing since sliced jello, huh? Well, I'll show them. I'll show them all. Okay, for all done with that crap, I'll make this brief. For the last year, I've been intensely studying the ancient martial arts of Taekwondo Hojo. Low. And um, right now I'm going to do something for you that even your precious little Donald can't do. I'm going to break a giant block of ice with my head. <laughs> this ought to be good. That block of ice was for the sodas. Now, please, I need absolute quiet for this. Otherwise, there could be disastrous results. <clears throat> I'm a rock. My head is a rock. From my neck up, I'm a rock. <laughs> I'm sorry, boy. I just couldn't resist. <laughs> Pinheads. All right, this is it. Bang quang quang ton, quang te, bang quang quang ke, e bang quang quang ke, ba ba be be quang ka. Bang te. Okay, now if you'll all excuse me, I'm gonna pass out. Twice in one day. Call Ripley. <laughs> Wake up, Cinderella. He doesn't look so good. Huh? He's alive, everyone! Oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, one and all. It's nice to be supported by relatives that appreciate an honest effort. Now put a lid on it, boy. They're not applauding you. They're applauding Donald. He's the one who revived you. Oh, fine. Well, it's obvious we've reached a turning point here. All diplomatic measures have failed. So there's only one thing left for me to do. Go trash his piece of crap car. <laughs> I think I'll just leave a little calling card for you, Donald. How about a couple of tuna balls stuffed nicely back in the glove compartment? I would love to see your face when these babies turn ripe in a couple of days. <laughs> Best of Falco. Why does the phrase socially retarded come to mind? I think you'll like this music a little better. Donald, it's called... Why does my car stink so much? <sighs> I hate you, Donald! I hate you! You're a girl! You're ugly! You're a girl! I hate you, Scott! I hate you! I hate you! 
I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> Mr. Donald Peterson, personal and confidential. <laughs> Dear Mr. Peterson, this letter is to inform you that you are now 10 days past due on your loan payment. Failure to bring this account up to date could result in a minor interest penalty. My God, it's, it's like having Ma Barker in the family. <laughs> I finally have something on him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Excuse me, has anyone seen a little bottle of pills labeled heart medicine? I wouldn't bug you except in except it's emergency. All right, honey, really? that's it. I, okay, I, I, fine. I, 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 no, I you get, yeah, okay, pedal your snake oil somewhere else. <laughs> Folks, if you don't mind, uh, let me interrupt your little simple-minded idiotic chit-chat here and share something very special with you. <laughs> Allow me to read you something that I discovered during a uh, routine search of Donald's Beyond Fabulous Chevette. <clears throat> now, I'll paraphrase because uh, most of you here have the attention span of a circus monkey. So. <laughs> Dear Mr. Peterson, either make good on your loan payments or we'll turn your melon stand into a parking lot. <laughs> Signed, York National Bank. Well, it seems that Sir Donald is nothing more than a flaming late bill payer. <laughs> yes, yes, well, good. That's, that's refreshing to see that you've changed your minds about Donald. Chris, they're not bullying Donald, they're bullying you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, kicking a man when he's down. After he saved your life, you're the scum of the earth. <laughs> I'd like to stab you with this plastic fork. What a little fan club you've got here. Wait a second, I mean, it's not like Donald's some sort of little fragile ceramic birdie or anything. He can take a little criticism. I mean, the guy's got a huge ego. Nothing bothers him. Look, on the road! I'm gonna jump! It's okay. It's okay. We love you! I've let you all down, so now I'm gonna splatter myself all over the lawn. Oh, geez, just what I need. Place is gonna be crawling with cops and reporters. Thanks to Chris, I've completely lost the will to live. Oh. Don't jump, Donald! We love you and we hate Chris! That's all that you better get up there and take care of this before something grisly happens. I don't need my property values dropping. Come on, why should I lift a finger to help him? Give me one good reason. Because your relatives are on the verge of murdering you. We're going to kill Why do you say that? Okay. All right, Donald. Don't come any closer, or I'll jump. Oh. Okay, okay, don't get your panties in an uproar, okay? <laughs> oh, oh. You know, Donald, I have to hand it to you. This little ode to Billy Joe crap is a real crowd pleaser. <laughs> you think I'm doing this for attention, huh? Well, we'll see what you think when your old man has to shovel me off his patio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Donald... As a living, breathing human being with a conscience, I feel it's my duty to try and prevent you from jumping to your bloody death. But then again, as your less successful cousin who's always hated your stinking guts, I just want to remind you that you're an adult free to do whatever you want to do, so. Finally, I'll be free from this cold, heartless, demanding world. Free from bank payments, IRS audits, and yes, fraternity suits. Donald, please, let's not get carried away. <laughs> Come on, the only women you ever got came in a box with a volleyball pump. Well, this is it. Goodbye, cousin. I dropped my hot dog. I dropped my hot dog. I'm about to cry like a six-month-old baby girl. <laughs> Shut up, you idiot. Here, pick one. Tastes like crap anyway. <laughs> Donald. 
Donald, Donald, don't do it. You have so much to live for. You have family and, and friends that care for you. you you've got melon customers that, that want to buy melons from you. And, and you've got a great used car that, well, that's mysteriously going to stink in a couple of days. <laughs> Donald, don't jump. Okay, I won't. Did you hear that, everyone? I'm not going to do it. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you all very, very much. Whew. Boy, it was touch and go up here for a bit, but uh, we got through it. Everyone's okay. <laughs> Just call me Mr. Crisis Intervention. <laughs> I'll be down in a couple of seconds, and uh, you're all free to line up and kiss my heroic butt. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I'm a big hero. I saved the day. I'm a hero. Look at me, Donald. I'm shaking it for you, honey. <laughs> Oh. Hey, he did it. He actually broke that block of ice with his hand. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. I told you I could do it. And, and now for your added enjoyment, my trademark loss of consciousness. Technically, he only did it because Donald was here. Hi, this is Emilio Estevez. Please join Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Diamond Phillips, Charlie Sheen, and me tomorrow night for the original Fox Night at the Movies presentation of Young Guns. Now, stay tuned. An all-new Married with Children is next. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> That's hot stuff. Hi, and welcome back to Sandy's Laughing Song Jackpot. I'm your host, Sandy Connors. Thank you. And coming up in the next half hour, we've got Mr. James Brolin with us. Also, uh, Al Grandpa Lewis is here again, and Eric Estrada is going to stop by and give us a little karate demonstration. But before we get to all that, something very, very exciting is about to take place. In a few seconds, I will be choosing the winner to our Win a Weekend with Sandy contest, okay? Girls, come on out. <laughs> nice dress. I think it took more fabric to make one of my hankies here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kid the girls that Mr. way. Don't sit so close to the television. You'll ruin your eyes. Well, sitting close to the TV doesn't ruin your eyes, Gladys. It causes sterility. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> Sandy's just about to announce the winner of the Win a Weekend with Sandy Connors contest, and my name's somewhere in that barrel. Win a Weekend with Sandy Connors? Are you nuts? Only a simp would want to spend time with that guy. <laughs> Sandy Connors is my idol. He's one of the greatest entertainers of the 20th century. He's up there with Laurence Olivier and Irving Berlin and, and the guy who played Ebb on Green Acres. The winner, Mr. Chris Peterson. Yeah. Yes. Slam dunk. Yes. In his face. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I forgot to turn the drop. Oh, sorry, Mr. Peterson. I forgot to roll the drum over here. Uh, so I guess you're. Disqualified. There's another lawsuit, huh? Honey, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm really disappointed. Hmm. Okay. Whew, that's the most exercise I've had since my pet monkey ate a pound of coffee and chased me down the block with a steak knife. I don't know where it comes from. It's just a kid. Okay. All right, the winner is... Chris Peters. <laughs> What, do you think I'm a moron? I sent in 3,000 postcards. <laughs> uh, Mr. Peterson, unless my lawyers can figure out some way of getting me out of this horrible ordeal, I will be at your home this weekend, meeting you and your family and your friends. Lord, I'm starting to feel ill. <laughs> Chris, would you please sit down? You're making me nervous. 
Sit down? Dad, I can't sit down at a time like this. Sandy's going to be here any second. Hey, that reminds me. I better a couple of these. Crying out loud, you're not going to kiss the guy, are you? This is more exciting than the day we waited for Sears to deliver our new trash compactor. Yeah, but why do we have to wait up here? There's a bowl of fresh nuts in the living room. <laughs> Excuse me, Dad. I'm sorry, but the living room's just a little too unhit for Sandy. Come on, my place is more happening. It's more, more now, more with it. Oh, yeah, man, I really feel the beat in here. <laughs> He's here! He's here! Sandy! Okay, that ought to do it. Nice seeing you, sir. No, no, Sandy, it's me. Chris Peterson, the contest winner. Yeah, I had that horrible feeling. Nice outfit. Uh, manage a tire store? <laughs> <laughs> We're always on, aren't we? <laughs> Boy, Sandy Connors in my home. Well, I think the word home is being a little generous here, don't you? <laughs> what the hell is that? That, Sandy, is the throne I've been making all week for you. Isn't it fanciful? <laughs> uh, well, um, Sandy, come right over here. I'd like you to meet my parents. Um, this is my mother, Gladys. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Personally, I've never found you very funny, but I think you have a very nice speaking voice. Well, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate the support. <laughs> and this is my father, Fred Peterson. Yeah, Fred? You know, on television, you look a lot younger. How old are you, anyway? About 60? <laughs> I'm, uh, 42. Sir. <laughs> and I'm Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, anyway, I was just dropping by to say hello, you know, on my way to the Marriott. And I figured maybe tomorrow you guys could come by and we'll take a little picture out there by the lobby, okay? And then I'll be on my way. It's been a real pleasure. Um, I'm sorry, Sandy. Um, I didn't understand that last part. Was that one of your jokes? Well, you didn't think I'd be staying here now, did you? I mean, that really would be a little bit silly, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, not to mention unpleasant and horrifying. <laughs> oh, Sandy. Oh, dear, sweet, innocent, naive Sandy. <laughs> Sandy, do you know what this is? This is a copy of the official rules to the Win a Weekend with Sandy contest. Now, Sandy, it clearly states here that you are required to spend 48 hours with me. Now, if you're going to challenge me, I'll run right over to the mall and get myself a lawyer. No, Chris, 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 Chris. Chris. You know, I guess if guys can spend their entire life in uh, Attica, I can put up with two days of this. <laughs> I hope I haven't made a horrible mistake here. Are you allowed to eat ham, Sandy? Oh, yes, ma'am. I can eat ham. Really? For some reason, we thought you were Jewish. You are from New York. No, I'm from St. Louis. Did you people done your homework? I'm not Jewish, okay? I think we hit a sore spot. Look, we just eat. I'm starving. The last thing I had was a hot dog at the airport. thought we'd have you say grace tonight, Sandy. It's an honor we only bestow on special guests. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Ah, <laughs> uh, look, why don't we all just uh, meditate silently to ourselves? I had a feeling you'd crap out on the prayer. <laughs> <sighs> What did you wish for, Sandy? Oh, don't tell me. It won't come true. It's a prayer, you moron. Not a birthday cake. Settle down, you two. So, you're an entertainer. Entertain us. Oh, yes. Sing us a song or, or do a magic trick. Ma, Dad, come on. For crying out loud, he's not a performing seal. Let the man eat his dinner in peace. Jeez. Sandy, do you feel like maybe doing a little break dancing for us? Is there, is there a gun rack around here somewhere? <laughs> Did you hear that, Ma? That was one he's starting to tell jokes. I didn't get it. Okay, I'll tell you what. Uh, if you folks will let me out of here, I will buy you one of those big projection TVs. 
It's like a little game of chess, isn't it, Sandy? The only problem is, I own Boardwalk, and you keep landing on it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Are we praying again? <laughs> well, thank you for the lovely dinner. But, uh, it's been kind of a long day for me. I think maybe if you'll point me toward the guest room, I'll just call it a night. Guest room? You can't stay in the guest room. I know what you show business people are like. You just trash the place. Besides, we just set off a tick bomb in there. Yeah, the cat's loaded with them. So you better check yourself in the shower. Beautiful. So where am I supposed to sleep? Hi, Sandy. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, Chrissy's bed. A place to lay my weary head. Chris, Chris, Chris. I'm exhausted. So where am I supposed to sleep? <laughs> there is not a chance in hell. <laughs> okay, fine, Sandy. <clears throat> if that's the way you want it. Fine. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Why don't you sleep on the sofa? <clears throat> but I warn you, it's loaded with chiggers. <laughs> Why don't you guys just buy some screen doors or something? You know, that's easy for you to say, but not all of us make $90 million a week. <laughs> Come on, Sandy. Come on. Let's just make the best of it. Morning will be here before you know it. Sandy, can I ask you a question? No. Do you think the American Dental Association has a cure for tooth decay, but it's just keeping it a secret? I mean, think about it. They'd lose millions, wouldn't they? Chris, why don't you just go in the bathroom and have a couple swigs of NyQuil, huh? You know, it's, it's funny you should mention the bathroom because um, <clears throat> that's something I'll be doing an awful lot of tonight. <laughs> I have a bladder like a woman. <laughs> Lovely. Good night. Good night. Oh. <laughs> 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 What? What? Midnight snacks? No, no. <laughs> okay, well, if you change your mind, there's a couple of pickles wrapped in a napkin in my sock drawer, so help yourself. Chris, you're driving me nuts. I mean, don't you ever sleep? You're like this skitzy little chihuahua who's just whining to go out. <laughs> Jeez, I'm sorry, boy. Some pajama party this turned out to be. Look, it's not a pajama party, you dork. It's two o'clock in the morning and I'm, my head is throbbing. It's starting to feel rashy. <laughs> Sandy? What? Want to see my appendix scar? <laughs> I take it you're getting a little drowsy. <laughs> oh. oh, good morning, Sandy. <laughs> oh, did we sleep well last night? <clears throat> Maybe it was my imagination, but I thought I heard you cursing at one point. Go to hell. We're not a morning person, are we? <laughs> I'll tell you what you need, Sandy. You need a little sunlight in here. That's what you need. Here we go. Oopsie daisy. Oh, there we are. Ooh, sky rockets in flight. Bow, bow. Afternoon delight. Good morning. <laughs> oh, geez, we gotta get going. We've got a busy day ahead of us. Come on. First, we're gonna have my big Sunday breakfast. Loads and loads of bacon and lots of Sprite. And then I'm going to take you outside and parade you up and down the street and show you to all my friends in the neighborhood. And then I'm going to... Hey, Sandy, what are you doing with your shoes? I'm putting them on because I'm leaving. I'm getting the hell out of here. I hate you. I hate your family. I hate this little lawnmower shed you live in. All right, Sandy. As I see it, I have two options in front of me right now. One, I could cry. 
Oh, and believe me, I could do that very easily. <laughs> Two, I could remember that it's Hollywood that's made you a shallow, cynical human being inside. Sandy, I'm going to take you out today and show you a world that's full of life, hope, and, and laughter. Oh, well, please don't. <laughs> remember the last time that I felt this free and happy. <laughs> Although I'm going to be honest with you now, when I first set foot in this house and I first met you and your parents, I sincerely thought I was in hell. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. But now, Chris, boy, thanks to you, <laughs> my whole outlook has changed. Because, you know, who needs show business anyway? Who needs the mansions? Who needs the leather sofas and the Lincoln Continentals? <laughs> nope, I'm all through with that. Well, what exactly are you saying, Sandy? I'm moving in with you, buddy. <laughs> Never leaving. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, folks. What you doing? Having a little breakfast? No, we're spot welding plumbing fixtures. <laughs> you know, you're a real character, Mr. Peterson. If I hadn't quit my TV show, I'd have you on one of my wacky old people segments. <laughs> Incidentally, you're all out of laundry detergent again, so I throw in a cake of safeguard. I hope that doesn't screw anything up. <laughs> Mrs. P. Would you get me a beer out of the refrigerator? <laughs> you all done, sir? Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> Not a big fan of blueberry pancakes. <laughs> you know, for future reference, I just like them plain, but uh, no hard feelings. Huh? <laughs> there he is. There's my best friend in the whole world. How you doing, pal? Hey, Chris, what do you want to do today? Huh? You, you want to build a couple go-karts? Sandy, I don't have time for crap like that. I work for a living, okay? Yeah. Hey, that reminds me. Did you have a chance to talk to your boss about getting me one of those little paper route deals? It sounds like so much fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did, Sandy. And uh, yeah. um, he said there weren't any openings right now. Really? Did you tell him I used to have my own TV show? <laughs> There's that big slobbery dog from next door. I'm gonna go wrestle with him for a while. I'll be right back. I can't take it anymore. He's he's driving me crazy. Well, I warned you, but as usual, you wouldn't listen to me. Next time, honey, try to win a nicer celebrity. Someone like Gary Collins. <laughs> Believe me, I've learned my lesson. Oh, boy. Show business people are nothing but worthless losers who should be admired only from afar. <laughs> If I could only figure out a way how to get rid of Sandy. Why don't we plant our credit cards on him and then call the cops? Who's phony, two-faced, middle American average Joe bastards? Hey, I know. I could take him to the zoo at Millerstown and then dump him there. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's about a hundred miles away. No, he'd just find his way back. We could always kill him. <laughs> All right. You want me gone? I'm gone. I knew I shouldn't have tried to make friends with a bunch of hillbillies. <laughs> Sandy. Sandy. Sandy, wait. Sandy. Oh, boy. Sandy. Oh, come on, Sandy. We didn't mean it. You're a joy to be around. <laughs> Sandy? Leave me alone, you burr-headed pillow biter. Sandy, what are you doing up there? Is that any way for a multi-millionaire celebrity to act? Jeez. Oh, boy. There I come. Oh! Oh! Sandy. <laughs> Oh, hey, uh, Sandy. Oh, 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 excuse me. I don't think you're aware of this, but uh, <coughs> this is one of those non-smoking trees. Chris, I know why you're here. You're going to try and talk me into coming back and living with you. Uh, actually, no, Sandy, not at all. In fact, uh, I don't ever want you to come back. Well, fine. I'll just stay up here until I'm a rotting corpse and I stink up the whole neighborhood. Nice town. You got dead people in the tree. <laughs> Sandy, you know, when I first met you, I said to myself, now, now here's a guy I can really look up to. I mean, he's everything that I'd want to be one day. He's, he's rich, he's, he's famous, he's, he's good looking, he's, he's snotty. Come on, Chris, you make me sound like Joe Garagiola. <laughs> but you know what, Sandy, I'm not the only one that looks up to you. I mean, you literally have hundreds of fans out there. And you know... It's not fair for me to keep you all to myself. I mean, these people, they depend on you. Yeah, but Chris, show business is it's so grueling. It's five hours of work every week. It's having to wear those horrible synthetic hair pieces. Yes, but it's also very rewarding, isn't it? Sandy, you make people laugh in a, in a world where laughter is, is kind of a precious commodity. Like, like coffee and, and jam and gloves. That's true. <laughs> Not to mention, I get a truckload of money <laughs> and incredible amounts of tail. <laughs> exactly. Now, that's the Sandy I know. Well, you know, you're absolutely right, Chris. Yeah, I, I didn't come this far in my career to abandon everything and move in with a guy that throws a baseball like a ballerina. <laughs> Exactly. No, I was absolutely, obviously put on this earth to uh, entertain America and take home a fat paycheck, huh? <laughs> so as long as there is breath left in this old body of mine, that is exactly what I am going to do. Thank you, Chris. No. You kill me. Oh. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Sandy, yeah. when will I see you again? Oh, Chris, you can see me anytime you want. In fact, thanks for asking. I will be at the uh, Tropicana Hotel, March 19th to the 23rd. From there, it's down to beautiful Miami Beach, Florida, the Fountain Blue. Last time Bob Culp showed up, surprised me. He's a little nice. And then from there, out to the coast, I'll be a guest on Match Game PM. You check your local listings for time and space. Adios, Kelsey. Goodbye. Oh, hey. Goodbye, sweet Sandy. I shan't forget you. Creator of Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark comes an epic story of courage, adventure, and of course, romance. What are you staring at? Your leg. I'd like to break it. Val Kilmer stars in the broadcast premiere of Willow, tomorrow on Fox Night at the Movies. Now stay tuned for Married with Children. Hey, kids. Hi. Don't get up. What's wrong? You guys look so sad. Don't worry. 18's just around the corner, and then you'll be able to see the director's cut of nine and a half weeks all you want. <laughs> You feel better now? We're hungry and Mom's still sleeping. She's exhausted. Well, of course she is. You know, it's hard work being a mother, wife, and scourge of the town. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. 
I'll make you a nice, nutritious breakfast. What do you say? Chris, remember Mom doesn't like you touching any of our utensils? Hey, your mom is lucky I showed up before a group of social workers descended on this place and slapped you into the nearest foster home. I mean, look, it's 7 o'clock and, and you guys are out of your cribs blue from malnutrition. <laughs> What do you kids like to eat for breakfast nowadays, huh? How about ribs? <laughs> God, Chris, what on earth? Oh, <coughs> you're up. Kids, get a couple more plates, will you? <laughs> See? Then spray with fire extinguisher, let's stand and serve. <laughs> ah, okay. Who likes dark meat? You have burned my kitchen beyond recognition. It's not burned, Sharon. It's blackened. My beautiful walls. It took the painter and me three days to come up with this color. Oh, and I'm not allowed to make my own little statement? <laughs> As your friend, I suggest you get on your bike and pedal your fat rump home as fast as you can. Hey, Sharon, it looks a lot worse than it really is. I mean, just a little 409, and before you know it, your kitchen's gonna look spick and spooty, spoofy spadoony. I think you're looking at two grand worth of damage here. Really? Even after the 409? Make sure that you get a check for $2,000 tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Ooh, thank you. Ooh, hail Caesar. Ooh, alam salamahana. Ooh, anafana fufana fufana. <laughs> hey, so this turned out to be kind of a cool fire after all, huh? And none of those annoying smoke alarm wines to shout over either. <laughs> oh, my. Are you saying the alarm was disabled? No. No. Yes. Yes. Yes, it was. I, uh, I took the batteries out of it. <laughs> I always do whenever I cook, because I always make gobs and gobs of smoke. <laughs> you know, once my aunt's smoke alarm went off, and it totally screwed up her sense of balance. <laughs> and she did so love her trampoline. Well, intentionally disabling an alarm totally violates our agreement. I'm very sorry, but you get nothing. Uh, Chris, you have destroyed my kitchen. Ruined. Our insurance policy, I... Larry, I think we finally have enough to put him behind bars. Chris, $2,000 is a lot of money. Larry, come on, don't worry, I'll pay you back. I'll pay a little out of my salary each week. You know, not enough to make me uncomfortable, but, uh, you know, we should be even by the year 2011. Hey, maybe even 2010 if I go back to domestic cheese. Hope my knives didn't melt in the fire. Hey, wait a second, guys. Shield your eyes from the light bulb over my head. I got a great idea. I'll work it off. Sharon, I'm sure you could probably use a strapping young lad around the house, couldn't you? Sure, but I don't need a fat, drooling imbecile. No, of course you don't. I agree. What's the point? <laughs> Look, come on, Larry's always telling me how you're whining and moaning about not having enough help around the house and how you never want to lift a finger. Oh, he is, is he? Honey, I didn't say anything. Chris may have inferred a thing or two. Great, then it's all settled. I'm your new Uncle Charlie. You have no idea what you're setting yourself up for. No way, darling. I could actually make him do anything, couldn't I? Well, I, I draw the line at sex. <laughs> you have a deal. Great, deal. Oh, good morning, Mr. P. My, we're up bright and early. 
and I suppose you'll be wanting your coffee. Chris, <laughs> for last time, as a 10-year veteran of Sharon, I beg you not to do this. Look, I'm going out of town for a couple of days, and you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. <laughs> Larry, would you relax? Jeez, I know how to take care of myself around Sharon. Gosh, you know... Unlike you, I still have a little steel left in my shorts. <laughs> Wait, what? Good morning. Oh, good morning, my lady. Good morning. I'm here to do your bidding, my lady. <laughs> Shall I draw you a bath, my lady fair? <laughs> All right, Chris, drop the idiot and waiting routine. Here are the house rules. First, speak only when spoken to. Mm -hmm. Second, Obey orders instantly upon hearing the phrase, now get out. And third, I want no trace of your personality whatsoever. You are vapor. Whew. Boy, that's a relief. <laughs> For a second there, I thought you wanted me prancing around in something really short and tight. <laughs> Where are you spoken to? You know, that's funny. That reminds me of a funny story. When I was in first grade, Mrs. Wallace told me that she didn't want to hear a peep out of me. So when she turned her back, I went, peep! <laughs> Chris, <clears throat> that's precisely the kind of crap that is history in my presence. Well, come on, Sharon, it was just a joke. Okay, fine. Deal's off. You owe us $2,000. See you in court. Larry, call the lawyer. Oh, okay, all right, fine, you win. Jeez. Do I? Yes. Yes, Miss Sharon. Yes, Miss Sharon. Now once, with the eyes cast downward. Yes, Miss Sharon. Now say it higher. Yes, Miss Sharon. Now low. Yes, Miss Sharon. In Latin. Domin etum, getum, tacum, lacum, nacum, Sharon. My life is storybook perfect. <laughs> now get out. Oh, there. All done, Miss Sharon. Yes. That's very nice, Chrissy, but... But, you know, I think I prefer that pair on top. Oh, 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 no. Please. Please, Miss Sharon. No. I'll do anything. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> My lungs are black from oven grease. <laughs> I have blisters on my vacuuming hands. <laughs> what have you done with my parents? <laughs> they know nothing. <laughs> please. Oh, please stop this madness. <laughs> but Chrissy. Uh, 
To quote the carpenters, we've only just begun. <laughs> Hi, honey. Well, hello, sweetheart. How was your trip? Fine. Where's Chris? Under the floorboards? <laughs> well, I figured I'd come home and the place would look like the end of Taxi Driver. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pardon the intrusion, Miss Sharon, but your sweaters are all pillless now, and it's time for your four o'clock lip bombing. <laughs> hey, Chris, that's pretty funny. Oh. Hello, Mr. Sharon. W would you care for a light, nutritious snack? I'm here to serve. <laughs> okay, okay. It's very funny. Now cut it out. Gee, my neck is certainly stiff from all this reading. Ah. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's not joking. What have you done to my friend? Oh, Larry, what are you getting so worked up about? I've simply broken his will and gutted his soul. <laughs> As you can see, I've left his pitiful shell intact. This is one thing I will not put up with. Unless, of course, you want me to. <laughs> so, as to the subject of breastfeeding in public restaurants, we still lack 5,000 signatures before we can get that legislation to City Hall. Now, of course, I could send Chris door to door until he drops. Well, I'll be happy to do anything I can, Miss Sharon. I mean, after all, it's only natural. A breast is just a gland, like your tonsils or your liver or, or your ears. And my God, how many ears do we see hanging out in restaurants nowadays? I mean, if anything should be covered up. It's like living in Paris in the 20s. Would you like some more pate? Oh, my God, Miss Sharon's glass is almost empty. And there's no more mineral water out here. <laughs> Miss Sharon, I'll get some for you right away. I'm sorry, I am an unworthy fool, aren't I? Miss Sharon, that crust is incredible. An absolute gem. Hello, Chris. Oh, hello, Mr. Sharon. That's a lovely sack that you have. I'm afraid I can't talk right now. Miss Sharon is out of mineral water, and, and you know what that means. Oh, you poor brainwashed bastard. Now, Mr. Sharon, you know how Mrs. Sharon doesn't like that salty sailor language. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Oh, help! It's dark in here! Mommy, help! I'm in a sack! Me, I am in a sack! Oh, 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 help! I'm still in a sack! It's okay, buddy. It's gonna be okay. Where am I? You're in your room, Chris. Where's Miss Sharon? She's not here. She's far away. You're safe. She can't hurt you here. What's going on? Listen to me very carefully, Chris. My wife's done something she's very good at. She's eaten your soul. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Larry. I'm the same Chris I always was. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go get Miss Sharon her mineral water and then take all the salt off her pretzels the way she likes them. Chris, listen to yourself. I can't allow this to happen. It's too depressing. You used to be a really fun, terrific idiot. But now you remind me of, well, me. My soul may be lost, but by golly, yours shall survive. Larry, you're talking like a hippie in a catnip factory. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay, Mr. Wiseass. If you're so fine, let's see you stay away from Sharon for more than five minutes without breaking into a cold sweat. And I throw this out. She's probably parched by now. <laughs> that should be a piece of cake. I mean, you know, it's not like I'm a robot with a power pack up my butt. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, so maybe it's a little stuffy in here. Either that or I have a power pack up my butt. I knew it. Oh. Ah. What the hell are you doing? What the hell is this? Sorry, it's for your own good, buddy. What? Where the hell did this chair come from? I made it in my hobby shop. Isn't it neat? Hey, what's going on here? Hey, ah! Mr. Sharon, what are you doing? I don't need a haircut. Hey, hey, I can't move. I can't move. What's happening? Relax, Chris. This isn't going to be pleasant, but it's going to be worth it. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, no. 
You're not going to make me watch an evening at the Improv with Bud Friedman, are you? No, Chris. Something with even lower production values. Uh, 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 no, no. Ah. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Honey, hold the hot dogs up so I can see them. That's it. <laughs> this is going to be the best Fourth of July ever, sweetheart. Oh, Miss Sharon. You look lovely. Let me take that tray for you. Hi, Sharon. Hey, you finally found something simple enough to cook that you can't screw up, huh? Oh, I guess I spoke too soon. Still buying the cheapest cuts of meat, huh, Sharon? <laughs> Get your moron, loser, idiot friend out of here. Rock, it's hot dog boy. I'm hot dog boy. Come on. Give me a hot dog kiss. <laughs> Oh, 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 get away from me, you idiots! <laughs> <laughs> See, you used to be so cool. Mustn't upset Miss Sharon. No, no. Speak when spoken to. Speak when spoken to. I mean Easter, and um, here are the eggs. Here's a pretty pink one that Amy did. Bobby, here's that pretty blue one you did. Isn't that nice? I'm so Hiya, proud. folks! It's Hot Dog Boy! <laughs> what, are we going to church or something? I am tired of this stupid joke. <laughs> Look, Sharon, I got some mistletoe. You know what that means? That means that somebody's gonna have to give Hot Dog Boy a big Hot Dog French kiss. Mm, mm. It's Easter, you idiot! Hot Dog Boy's invincible! No! <laughs> God! Ah, ah, ah. What an idiot! You're an idiot! Ah. You're an idiot! Idiot! Go! This shirt is good! Miss Sharon is love. Miss Sharon has maintained her figure after two children. You're an idiot! An idiot! Idiot! Hey, hey, Larry. Larry, I'm cured. I'm cured, Larry. Really, I am. I'll never listen to Sharon again. Oh, thank you, Larry. Thank you. I'm cured. Stop it, Chris. What do you think? I came to town on a melon truck? I'll tell you when you're cured. Wait, there's more, Chris. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. 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 You idiot. You idiot. You, you idiot. 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 Where did you get this awful tape? Well, I made it my home video eight system. Pretty cool, huh? Why, Chris? What are you doing here, out of my sight? I was left to put the dishes in the dishwasher by myself. I looked around, but you were nowhere to be seen. Oh, without so much as a mistress, may I? Sharon, <laughs> it's over. Your days of Chris and Roses have come to an end. He's not going back. I'm directing all my fury at Chris now, Larry. But I'll recharge and kill you later. Chris is free. I've broken him of your noxious spell. Is that so? That's right, Miss Sh Sharon. I'm back to the old me. Well, we'll just see about that. Chris, pick up that pin for me. In your dreams. Chris, I'm waiting. No! All right. Just an impartial observer, honey. Oh, my. I seem to have dropped my sweater. I do wish someone would pick it up for me.
pick up your own damn sweater. Yes! Now Taylor with one of your zingers! Pick up your own damn sweater, you whore. Whore. Go ahead! Say it! She's a whore! <laughs> no. Gosh, no. I was gonna say, she's a horrible young lady. I would never say something that awful to such a fine lady, no. <laughs> because I'm hot dog boy! <laughs> All my good work. Completely down the drain. Well, someone is going to have to pay for this. And you don't have to be Columbo to figure out who. <laughs> it was worth it. Uh. What a cool chair. Chris, pick up that sweater for me. Yes, Miss Sharon. Let me get that. Jeez. Cured, huh? <laughs> I guess from now on, it's just going to be one day at a time. Tomorrow night, Tom Skerritt and Nancy Allen star in the world broadcast premiere of Poltergeist 3. Good morning, Mamo and Papo. Today is a very special day for me. Every day seems to be a special day for you, son, and frankly, we're getting pretty sick of it. <laughs> no, today I really mean it. Guess who's gonna be at Drexler's department store? My soulmate. You mean that weird guy in sporting goods who has a strange stink? No, no, we lost touch recently. No, this is even better. Now brace yourselves. It's that gorgeous supermodel slash actress, Nicolette Preston. That's right. I read she was in town hawking some snake oil with her name on it. It's perfume, Ma. Here, smell. <laughs> I'm finally going to meet the woman of my dreams. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. We'll probably talk for, for hours on end and... And then maybe we'll even share some raisins, which at this very moment are getting nice and gushy in my pants. Chris, honey, I would never be the one to crush your most precious, fragile hopes and dreams. But if you were lying on the ground, almost dead from thirst, Nicolette Preston wouldn't take the time to spit in your face. Here, here. You're both wrong. Don't you see? We share a special connection. One that can only be formed after spending hours staring at her picture in a magazine or, or sitting through endless showings of her latest film until my clothes are all damp with saturated fats and my rear is all numb and swollen. <laughs> so much for breakfast. Nicolette's got to have felt that connection herself in her mind and in her heart and, and in her bladder. I don't know why they were making <laughs> What if she doesn't? Oh, Dad, please. <laughs> I don't even want to begin to think of the ramifications of that nightmare possibility. <laughs> Let's just say that the word bloodbath comes to mind. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Or am I? I don't know. Who said that? Not me. Him. Who? You? Plus tax. Who? Five bucks says he's in jail by noon. <laughs> I'm gonna have to stand in this line of idiots for hours. 
Maybe I should just think of an ingenious way to get ahead of all of them. <laughs> yeah, the hell with that. All right, move, move, move it. Get out of the way. All right, move it. Move it, Jarhead. Make room for a real fan. Come on, I like her better than you do. Come on, move it. Hey, very nice. Yeah. Okay, pal, very nice. That's going to make an exciting entry into your diary, isn't it? Off you go. Watch the toehead over there. It looks like a major psycho. You poor thing. Oh. I bet you have to put up with losers like him all day, huh? Some days are longer than others. <laughs> Miss Preston, my name is Chris Peterson, and I am your soulmate. <laughs> Boy, the static electricity really builds up in this carpet. No one's ever made me feel like that before. Really? Well, it's all for real. I mean, you can search me for a joy buzzer if you want. <laughs> You're so funny. Oh, no one's ever made me laugh like that. Wow. Well, I guess my faithful reading of the Family Circus comic every day has finally paid off. <laughs> I love the family circus. Really? Isn't it just fall down funny? What's your favorite color? Peach. Mine too. Your favorite song? Billy, don't be a hero. Mine too. W what's your favorite Bugs Bunny cartoon? The one where Daffy keeps trying to get bugs killed by hunters, but he keeps getting shot himself, and his bill keeps winding up in all different places on his face. Yes, yes, mine too. I can't believe it. Look, I, I even wrote it down in, in case situation arose where I had to prove it to somebody. Look, I can see it right there now. My synopsis may vary a little bit from yours, but I think it's pretty much. What are those? Just some raisins. That I... I adore raisins. Look, look, I keep them right here in my pocket so they'll get all nice, nice and, and gushy. Nice and gushy. We are like soulmates. I told you. Nicolette, come away with me. Away from, from all of this. I can't. I mean, look at all the people are waiting. Let them all go to Hades. <laughs> This is the chance of a lifetime. Trust me. Where will we go? Geez, I don't know. I. How about a ride in a speedboat? Okay. <laughs> running off together. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, Chris, I've never had so much fun in all my life. Yeah, me neither. I think it's time you meet my parents. Okay. Chris, for God's sake, abducting a celebrity is a major felony. They'll hang you up by your Buster Browns, boy. <laughs> Jeez, Mom, Dad, you're embarrassing me. Come on. Gosh, every time I bring a woman home, you act like I kidnapped her. Okay, so one time I did. Come on, that was three years ago. What do I have to do to convince you that she really likes me? Well, let go of her and see if she makes a run for it. Oh, okay. I'll be damned. She must be nuts. So, Mom, Dad... What do you think of her? Well, she's sure not hard on the eyes. And she doesn't strike me as particularly slutty. <laughs> Nicolette, what do you think of them? I've met worse. <laughs> now, I guess the next step is painfully obvious. <clears throat> <clears throat> Nicolette, will you marry me? <laughs> That's it. He's airborne. Yes, Chris. I will. Oh. Holy Toledo. Thank you for coming on 
such short notice. Chris, this is incredible. Just incredible. Do you realize that? <sighs> Miss Preston, surely you are aware of the many facilities to which you could go for therapy. <laughs> Who is this bitch? <laughs> Don't worry, honey. It's just an old jilted lover. <laughs> Okay, let's get this over with. My prostate feels bigger than a basketball. <laughs> Lovely. Bless you, Milad. I assume you've had your blood tests? Uh, yes. In fact, we did them ourselves at home and everything tasted fine. Do you have a ring? Do I have a ring? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> with the kind of money she makes, she should buy me a ring. <laughs> Here, you can use mine. Are you crazy? That could be your whole scam. As soon as he slips that ring on her finger, she could take off like a bat out of hell. <laughs> Trust her. But if that should turn out to be the case, so help me, I will track you down like a little brunette animal. <clears throat> Do you, Nicolette Preston, take this boy to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. And do you, Chris Peterson, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Okay. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Oh, yeah, like I really need your permission for that. <laughs> oh, Fred, this is probably the most special moment of our entire lives. Yeah. While I'm here, could I get a fishing license? <laughs> Come on, honey. Let's go home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Chris, I'm sorry. I must have gotten mixed in with the rice somehow. <laughs> Refreshing change from my rambling Hollywood mansion. I think I sprained my rear carrying you up here. <clears throat> Sorry about all the fog. Uh, I get it in here this time of day. <laughs> Chico. You are amazing. No one in Hollywood could do what you just did. Really? Not even Roy Clark? <laughs> We're gonna be so happy together, aren't we? Oh, you bet. We're perfect for each other. <laughs> so, what should we do today? Well, hmm. I'm gonna read the newspaper. <laughs> I've got about a week's worth of catching up to do with my funnies. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna read them out loud. I have a cute little voice for all the characters. <laughs> sounds like fun, but I was kind of hoping we could go to the movies. What? I want to go to the movies. That's what I thought you said. What do you think I'm made of money? <laughs> Am I supposed to stay cooped up in here all day while you read? Okay, so now you're cooped up. You know, this place used to be fine with you. It is fine, but you never take me anywhere. <sighs> Nicolette, after a hard day at work delivering newspapers, I come home and I'm tired, okay? And I deserve a little rest and relaxation, and I do not want to be dragged all over the damn U.S. of A. <laughs> well, I'm tired too. I'm tired of your attitude. Will you stop nagging me? All you do is complain. <sighs> Why should I take you out anyway? You never dress up for me anymore. Why should I? We never go anywhere. Because I'm not made of money. <laughs> so sick of the same argument all the time. You're driving me crazy. Well, you're driving me crazy. Go to hell! Oh. <laughs> Nicolette, wait. Nicolette, wait. Uh, ooh, the hell with them. Who needs women anyway? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> 
Why, what's the matter, dear? Yeah, did your higher brain function suddenly kick in and you finally realized how you threw away your entire life? <laughs> we had our first fight. But you two were getting along so well. We were in the beginning, but not anymore. He, he won't take me anywhere. He started to take me for granted. Oh, well, that sounds like exactly what he's doing, dear. And you're just going to have to get used to it. <laughs> what? All the Peterson men take their women for granted. It's a sacred tradition with us. <laughs> All I wanted to do was go to the movies. Movies? What, do you think he's made of money? <laughs> Why, Mr. Freebo, you look like you're about to vomit. Don't be ridiculous. I can hold my liquor. <laughs> hi, Chrissy. Oh, hi, Patty. I was just wondering if I could borrow some sugar. Sure. <clears throat> How many bags do you need? <laughs> Just one. Okay. <laughs> so what's new, big guy? Uh, not a whole lot. I got married. Oh, well, congratulations. I thought I hadn't seen you around. Yeah, well, married life kind of changes everything. I haven't seen any of my friends lately. Still, they say there's nothing like it. I guess. I mean, in the beginning it was fine, but I don't know. Now we're going through kind of a rough patch. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Well, I just want you to know that I'm available if you ever want to talk about it. Uh, uh, I think you better be going now. Why? I'm not in any hurry. <laughs> Sweetheart, plucky poo. I swear we were just barbecuing. Don't lie to me, Chris. We've been through too much together for this. Well, I really think I ought to be going now. <laughs> Not so fast, home wrecker. No, really, I just right across the. Uh, oh! Oh! <laughs> 